my God. Bill? Oh, were you eating nachos? Is Mr. Dotrieve kissing Dad? Oh, Bobby, don't watch. We called 911, Shug. Wow, I can't believe how fast they've responded considering I didn't give them my real address. Uh, uh, ah! <laughs> what in the hell is going on? I smelled something coming from your house. Not the usual smell of cooking, pine cleaner, happiness. It was gas! Gas? Oh my God, the water heater. Ladybird, for the life of me, I don't know what I did wrong when I installed this unit yesterday. <sighs> Hank, the repairman from the church circular will be here any minute. Now, honey, I know that this is hard for you, but after last night, we need a second opinion. Peggy, I know I can fix it. Let me give it another shot. We can't risk it. I cannot bear the thought of going to sleep tonight and waking up with Bill slobbering on me again. <sighs> You must be Mr. Walker. Oh, Mr. Walker's what they call my father. Please call me Mac. Well, Mac, Reverend Stroop sure did give you a shining letter of recommendation. She said you were the answer to the church's sewer problems. Oh, <laughs> that's nice to hear. But I'm not only a plumber, I'm also a deacon at the church. I like to think of myself as a handyman for God. Hello, you must be the repairman that Peggy called behind my back. Mac. This is my husband, Hank. He's the one who almost killed us. Oh. Uh huh. I said the same thing. Hmm. Interesting. I find it interesting that you tapped the pipe with a three quarter wrench instead of a five eighth, but to each his own, I guess. Mr. Hill, did you know that I've been repairing water heaters and water heater accessories for over 20 years? Well, what a coincidence. I've been selling propane and propane accessories for over 20 years. I bet we've both seen a lot of crazy things in our day, huh? <laughs> Boy, I know what you mean. I had this fellow one time, nice fella, a chiropractor. <laughs> he tried to use first stage plastic tubing for a second stage regulator. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I can top that. I know a guy installed a brand new water heater without checking the old gun some seals. Next thing he knew, he woke up on his own front lawn after his neighbor dragged him to safety. Nice fella. Propane salesman. What? Are you referring to me? Was that a shot? That was a shot, wasn't it? Look, I need to remove a section of the drywall to get to the pipe for further inspection. I gotta get my dry vac before that dust gets into the vents. <laughs> Hey, girl. Hello, I'm Bobby. Are you here to fix the gas leak? Hey, Bobby, I think your dog hates me. I don't know why you think that. I've never seen her smile at anyone before. I got a dog at home, and I know when a dog has ill intent in his heart, and that dog's looking at me like I'm a pair of meat bone slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Meat bone slippers. <laughs> I'm gonna get a pen to write that down. Don't say anything while I'm gone. <laughs> Man, Mr. Walker is so funny. He's got this great routine about how Ladybird wants to rip out my throat. <laughs> he asked me to hit her in the head with a brick. What in the hell is funny about that? Well, maybe Bobby didn't tell it right. What's up, girl? Huh, that's strange. Mr. Walker, you in there? Yes, I'm in here. The door seems to be locked, but there's no lock on this door. I tied it off with a cord. Look, I I still have the right to observe your work. I just want to finish up the job without getting bit by your dog. My dog would never bite you. Well, she hasn't stopped growling at me since I got here. Ah, right there, see? She's giving me the evil eye. She's a hellhound. That's not true. You know what she loves? She loves to have her belly rubbed. And I love the use of all of my fingers. Come on, give her a rub. She's sweet. Okay. Hold her tight. I got her. See there, she likes you. I tell her she's a good doggy. Good doggy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> Ladybird, what's wrong with you? I'll tell you what's wrong with her. She's full of hate. 
Blackheat! That is preposterous. What is with all the barking? Mr. Walker is upsetting Ladybird. I'm upsetting her because I'm a black man. That is a lie. You're just nervous, which is making her nervous. Hank, get that dog out of here. But Peggy, he... Now, Hank! Mac, I apologize for my husband. He's always had an unhealthy relationship with that dog. Listen, we're making hamburgers on the grill, and I insist that you join us for lunch. I hope you like ketchup. Can you believe that guy? First he kicks me off my own water heater, then he has the nerve to call Ladybird prejudice. Yeah, man, talking about no Ladybird, man, it's like the disposition of a dove, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ladybird's so nice, she'd let someone eat out of her own bowl. No matter how drunk they were. Of course, I'm white. Thank you for having me for lunch. Everything looks delicious. Well, thank you, Mac. It is. You know, Mr. Walker, Lady Bird never acts the way she did this morning. I honestly don't know what got into her. I guess she was still feeling the effects of nearly being gassed to death last night. Pickle? Mr. Hill, I admit maybe I threw the race car at your dog a little too fast. Well, I swear, I thought she was going to throw a few teeth my way. Teeth my way? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I don't know much about these kind of things, Mr. Walker, but I do know that a man should not be judged by the color of his skin, but by the actions of his heart. I tell you what. Amen. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is flavorful. I wish my wife knew her way around a burger. Well, let me get you another one. All right. But if my wife calls, tell her I just had one. <laughs> Did you hear that? He's handpicked. You can't turn this guy off. Oh, oh, oh! Good doggy! Good doggy! Oh! Bad doggy! Ladybird, no! Well, I, I don't think she broke the skin, but better safe than sorry. Mr. Walker, I accept full responsibility for Ladybird's actions, but you've got to believe me, she is not prejudiced. I know she's not prejudiced. She's racist. No, she's not. She's just getting old, and she must have developed an acute fear of strangers. Hey, Dad, the mailman is here. Hello, you must be Mr. Hill. I'm your new mailman. Mr. Peters retired yesterday after 25 years. Boy, that was some party. Uh, yes, you would. Uh, Get your dog a new chew toy. I quit. See you in church. <sighs> yep. Yep. My dog is a racist. <sighs> she bit that repairman who happens to be black. Haven't black people been through enough? Yeah, man, told me no, all men created equal, man. Just like dang old pursuit of happiness, too, man. There's only two ways to handle it, Hank. You either shoot her between the eyes, old yeller style, or you sneak up from behind and get her in the back of the head. Either way, it'll cost you ten bucks. I'll choke her for five and you can keep the head. Well, I'll tell you right now, we cannot have that dog running amok, biting every black person she sees. It makes us look like ignorant rednecks. Oh, and it's bad for black people, too. <sighs> Where did we go wrong, Peggy? Bobby, I know you're uh, knowledgeable of the black videos and whatnot. And right now, I need you to use your love of... Uh, Puffy and uh, Diddy and Snoopy to help me. Is it about Ladybird? Yes. Yes, it is. Driving down the street in my Escalade, drinking Chris like Swiss in a chick parade, trying to get paid. Now, Dad, you keep petting her and feeding her treats while Ladybird just takes it all in. Check out his bling bling. There, there, girl. Just flow with the nice music and bling bling. Ladybird, no. Give him a chance. Hurry, they're about to have the pool party. <sighs> Ladybird, don't you get it? A man should not be judged by the color of his skin, but by, but by the actions of his heart. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, Mrs. Stogner. How is Lulu doing with the pillow chewing? That bitter apple spray you suggested worked wonders. Excellent. Let me guess what this little lady's problem is. She looks like a barker to me, huh? Bet she keeps the neighbors up all night, am I right? No, she doesn't bark. She bites. This sweet dog bites people? I don't believe it. Uh, 
Actually, she only bites, uh, black people. I didn't know she was a prejudiced pup when I picked her from the litter. She just looked so darn cute. Well, that is ridiculous. I can assure you that your dog is not racist. Oh, thank God. You see, dogs only follow subconscious cues from their owners. Well, what does that mean? That means that you are the one who is racist, Mr. Hill. <laughs> oh, and by the way, my girlfriend is African-American. You sicken me. Oh. What's up, Hank? Uh, not much. Oh, oh, hey, Roger. <laughs> I didn't realize that was you. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Could I get you a cup of coffee? I just poured one. Have you seen the cream? Oh, there you go, Roger. Some cream for your coffee. Whoa, that's enough, Hank. Is something bothering you? <sighs> well, to be honest, Roger, I was accused of being a racist. Hank Hill, a racist? But you got me my job here. Wait, the guy that called you that, was he wearing a bow tie? Uh, it's not a pretty thing to be accused of. I tell you what. You're really shook up about this. Look, I know you're not like that. But if it would make you feel better, you should take this internet test my brother-in-law made us all take last Thanksgiving. It's a good test. Said I was racially unbiased. And I love gay people. I didn't see that one coming, but I'm happy. Roger, show me this test. Faster, Hank! If you don't finish within the time limit, it voids the test! <sighs> but I don't remember what keys to press. Does the letter E stand for white or black? And, and what's I? Is it good or bad? I, I don't know. Just push one. You don't have time to think about it. That's how the test works. It's on a subconscious level. Go, go, go! This thing is so... Hey, guys. What's going on? Hank's taking the racist test. Oh, wow. Is he a racist? We don't know yet. I'm trying to concentrate. Yeah, what are you? Some kind of racist? <laughs> You're almost there, buddy. Quiet. This test has to be some kind of a joke. I mean, how can it determine if you're racist or not? Almost done. Just a couple more. There, you're finished. Now we just wait while it tallies up your score. <sighs> well, I don't think you can really go by something like this. I'm sure it's more of a game. You know, <laughs> for fun. <laughs> your test results show that you strongly prefer the company of white people. What? Wow, and the strongly is flashing. Oh, man. This test is 100% incorrect. I do not prefer white people over others. Roger, tell them. I poured you cream. Monday's the earliest I could schedule a repairman to fix the water heater, but I boiled up some water for a sponge bath and had enough left over for a cup of tea, a cup of soup, and a boiled egg. Fine. What's wrong? Well, you can have the egg. <sighs> I took this stupid racial preference test on the internet today in front of the whole office and failed miserably. The results claim that I only like white people. A test? Come on, faster, Peggy. You're nearly done. Oh. Don't rush me. I can't even remember what keys to push here. See, I told you it was stupid. There's no way this test can determine anything. I can't even believe I'm taking it. There. There, you finished. Now it adds up your crazy score. You know, I don't even care what it says because this test is absolutely stu- Oh, yeah! Strongly prefer the company of black people. Well, you can't argue with results, Hank. Quite honestly, I think it's a pretty good test. Honey, check to see if there's paper in the printer. I want to make a copy. Please be seated. For today's sermon, I'd like all the children of the flock to gather up front. You sicken me. Can anyone tell me what color this is? White! How about this one? Black! Black! Very good. Did you know that God created all the colors and loves them all equally? That's why he puts them in the same box. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are some people in the world who would prefer to keep white crayons in their own box, separate from the other crayons. Hank, Reverend Stroop loaned us a tool to help with our burden. And by virtue of my desire to be around black people, I will help guide you on the road to recovery. What am I supposed to do with these? They're racial tolerance dolls. You practice interacting with them. 
I will not play with dolls. Do you want me to tell Reverend Stroop you wouldn't even try? <sighs> what do I have to do? The first step to recovery is to admit that you have a problem with black people. But I don't. <sighs> a man should not be judged by the color of his skin, but by the actions... Admit it! Sorry, Hank, but it's part of the treatment. Now admit it! If you found those dolls in my room, I swear I've never seen them before. Relax, Bobby. They belong to your father. Dad plays with dolls? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not playing with dolls. I'm, uh, interacting with them. Oh. Can I interact with the dolls, too? <sighs> sure, son. Let's interact together. Hello. Have you seen a big, fluffy kitty running around here? What's your kitten's name? We call her Whiskers, but she'll answer to Kiki. Here, Kiki, Kiki, Kiki. Uh, uh, come on, Kiki. Where are you? I I'll get it. You two just keep on looking for that cat. Maybe your cat is under the table. Here, Kiki. <laughs> Ladybird, no, wait! Ladybird, drop it! Dear Lord, we have formed a prayer circle to pray for Hank Hill's racist heart. You got yourself a leak, do you? Well, don't you worry. I'll fix her good as new. Uh, you might want to... I got a magnetic screwdriver you can use. You're dropping the screws on the floor. You're going to lose them. Look, you called me because you needed my help, so if you'll just let me do the job. What's wrong, Ladybird? Ah! No! Get your dog off me! Ladybird, stop! What in the world? I don't know what got into her. She just started biting the... White guy. Ah, this dog is crazy! Get away! Get out! Ladybird's biting a white guy. A white guy, Peggy. That dog trainer was right. Ladybird did pick up on my subconscious cues. But I don't hate black people. I hate repairmen. Hey, hey! You were upset that you couldn't fix the heater, and so that's why Ladybird attacked Matt. Is Reverend Stroop still here? She's got to see this. Let's go get her before they start another song. Yeah, wait, wait! Don't leave me! Help! I mean, hello? Good Lord! Mr. Walker, please open the door. The clan means been moved to the pancake house. Please, I can explain everything. I assure you, Ladybird will not bite you. Yeah, I've heard that one before. You don't understand. Ladybird didn't bite you because you're black. She sensed that it really bothered me having someone work on my water heater. Really? Yeah, she just bit another repairman, a white guy. I checked, and he's Scotch-Irish all the way back. I swear to you on my 20 years of selling propane and propane accessories that my dog and I are not racist.
Welcome to the Audubon Society's 43rd and Peggy Hill's first annual backyard bird count. <gasps> Look, the rare and beautiful Texas nuthatch. Well, write it down, people, write it down! I have asked our Native American friend, John Redcorn, to join us as our expert bird identifier. My people believe when the world was new, the creator made all the birds. He colored their feathers and told them to greet each day with a chorus of songs. Why you stop fooling around with that John Redcorn? He is so smoking, smoking hot. Hey, Dale's hot too, in his own way. Gribble team ready. I'm assuming you'll want the heads for identification purposes. You're supposed to count the birds, Dale. Eventually they will be counted. Oh, a bird! It's so, so beautiful. Professional exterminator. You said you could handle this. I'm on it. These birds don't stand a chance against this ultrasonic bird distress emitter. <laughs> I was up all night listening to sounds that'll drive you crazy. <laughs> How long does this have to go on for? Forever! Scram. Boo! Sco, sco! I can't get inside these pigeons' heads! Bill, you're a filthy flocking animal. Would this scare you? No! Oh! No. That's it. This job is too much for me. It's time to bring in the big gun, the top shelf pigeon exterminator of Heimlet County, the pigeon god. Well, great. Call him up. She's a woman, and are you a fool? The pest control world isn't your fuzzy colored propane candy land where you can just call people. To get the baddest of the baddest ass, promises must be exchanged. Payola paid. Reputations put on the line. Sounds kind of scary. Oh, it is, and then some. If the pigeon god, or to her parents, Sheila Repkin, PhD, decides to stoop down to help our piddly little cause, it will be as if witnessing the beginning of time. <laughs> Three more days and I am 21. <laughs> this is so exciting. I'm going to be so much older and mature. Oh, I'm going to get really wasted at my party, so would one of you guys be my designated driver? I'd love to. Wow. Thanks, Aunt Peggy. Oh, I will make your birthday party so much fun. And I can be there to gently remind you that as the daughter of an alcoholic, you have a genetic gun pointed at your head, and with every drink, you are adding another bullet to the chamber. Mm-hmm. Would you be my designated driver? No, I, I don't really... No. It's okay, Uncle Hank. I'll just drive home drunk. There's so many great things I could crash my car into. A ditch, a telephone pole, a busload of babies. <sighs> Fine. Woo! Bobby, eat your chicken! I can't eat this. They're watching me. I did it. A meeting has been arranged with the Pigeon God's assistant. We leave in five. He's not here yet. It's a setup! Oh. Be cool. Ako Mangiangan and Kalapati Dios. Hmm. Sianasaan. Maari Dian Pukas. Arlen's best exterminator is coming to our alley. What should I have her sign? My canister? My traps? My face? Oh. oh my god! If I start acting like a fool, take me out with this poison. Oh wow. How y'all doing? Sheila Refkin, Heimlich County Pest Management. This is one impressive infestation. Was this neighborhood built on a landfill? 
Uh, Dale Gribble. <clears throat> Dale's dead bug. Did I say Dale's bug dead? Idiot. Dale Gribble. De <clears throat> uh, uh. Whoa, that's some kind of spray wand you got there. Bet you could blast one hell of a gopher with that thing. I could blast through a horse to get to the gopher. Look at the way she applies that chemical. She has clearly read the directions. Man, oh, dang old, she's looking all pretty like that, man. I'm back in my bedroom and talk about an old pigeons, man. Dale, honey, would you mind grabbing a caulking gun and helping me out? Do you know how many years I wish Peggy would ask me that? <sighs> ah, I don't deserve to be administering chemical next to an exterminator of your magnitude. I'm also not licensed to. Oh, Pooh. You have to squeeze the trigger gently. Just pretend like you're holding a pretty girl's hand. Pigeons hate anything sticky on their feet. When the gel gets on their foot, they fly away because they can't handle the sensation. Ah. Ow. And then Luann ditches me for Hank. I have driven for 20 years without an accident. One that wasn't my fault, anyway. Who is that woman? Oh, that's the new hotshot exterminator. Anyway, so Luann says to me, well, I'm not the She's trouble. But wouldn't that be poetic justice? I come back to Dale and then he runs off with another woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I would say it's ironic, but you're the one it's happening to. You can call it what you want. <laughs> Excuse me. Dang old bunny. <clears throat> Nancy, I was just telling Boomhauer that Sheila's can and your can share some striking similarities. Show him your can, Nancy. I don't think so. You know I don't like you looking at other ladies' areas. How can I help it? She's got your hot bod and my hot mind. It's like some science experiment that's gone horribly right. Dale, honey, could you bring me up the Johnson's Pesco Bird Repel Gel 320 ML? Oh, man. I could talk about the Johnson's Pesco Bird Repel Gel 320 ml for the rest of my life. Hey, Nancy, could you grab it for me? It's right behind you. <laughs> you have no idea what that is. <laughs> oh, I, I shouldn't laugh at you. <laughs> but when you picked up the diazinon, Oh, I gotta send that into bugs and giggles. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I think that's really good. Yep. Pardon us for being excited. We're unleashing some pretty supreme chemical in the alley this afternoon. Tell them about the chemical, will you, huh? Well, as you know, pigeons live in a flock. So we pick the alpha male, then we feed him a mild hallucinogen called Avatrol. Which is cleverly disguised as a kernel of corn. Bill, don't eat any corn on your lawn. And then the other pigeons see their alpha male flipping out. They say, hey, we don't want any of that mess. And the flock relocates itself. Isn't she a freaking genius? No, way. she's a god. Ow. So, I'm doing an overnight at the Econo Suites this weekend. Pigeons, rats, silverfish. You feel like coming along? You're asking me to join you on your route? I'd love to. And tomorrow they're going on an overnight extermination job, just like when John Redcorn and I went on our migraine cruise to Ensenada. But you need to tell Dale just to back off. Use this if you have to. Oh, how can I say anything to him? I was unchristian to Dale for a long time. I just want my shook back, shook. Maybe you should try to be more involved in Dale's life. You know, be a bigger part of his world. But Dale's world is so... I don't really want... No, I wouldn't either. But you seem to want to save this thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with you, Sheila. The second Lionel Jefferson was much better. The first guy was all fro, no show. Are we simpatico or what? I'm on the phone. Sheila, let me call you back. <clears throat> Fine, here's my ear. Touch it. I killed a spider in the kitchen today. I cannot explain the rush I got. So, I was thinking 
There must be all kinds of fun stuff to kill on your route. Mind if I tag along? I don't know, Nancy. It takes a special kind of lady to do what I do. I can be a special kind of lady. Nancy, shoot it! This is what you do! So, I'll pick you up at midnight? Honk twice so I don't shoot ya. Shug, 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 shug. I just wanted to come out here and give you a little present for including Dale on this big job tonight. It's a gift certificate. I figured a hard-working woman like yourself might enjoy a nice massage. John Redcorn's New Age Healing Center. Sounds relaxing. Make sure to ask for the Migraine Special. That's the Migraine Special. Oh, look at the certificate. It expires in two hours. You should go. Now. Now. Are there any special areas you'd like me to focus on? Well, Nancy Gribble said I should ask for the Migraine Special. Uh, Dale and I have only known each other a few days, but we have this, um, almost primal connection. You know? Like bugs do. To receive the full benefit of my therapeutic massage, you must quiet your mind. Oh, I can't help it. I'm so excited about my job tonight. Dale and I have so much fun together. The other day, as a practical joke, he put a dead possum in my igloo cooler. <laughs> we laughed. Dale. <sighs> What am I supposed to wear to Luann's birthday party? I need something that says I am not some weird old guy in the bar. I am here against my will. <sighs> some kind of designated driver you are. Pressure's already too much for you? Huh? Well, God help Luann. Happy birthday, Luann. Oh. Nancy, I feel I should warn you. Man, this is an awkward call. I think this woman is interested in Dale. You shouldn't let him go out tonight. Well, that's why I sent her to you. What about the massage? It was just... A massage. And she assumed the tip was included in the gift certificate. What's up, Hefner? <laughs> hey, you take that back. I am the designated driver, and I'd like a wristband that reflects that. That guy is so handsome. And you can tell by how hard he's laughing at that lady's joke that he's got a great sense of humor. He's got a great sense of ass in those jeans. Hey, hey, hey. Don't normally pick up chicks in bars. Oh, God, no, no, no. I can't be here for this. Hey, what's your name, beautiful? It's Luann, but you could call me beautiful. I am totally flirting in a bar. I have never needed a beer so bad in my entire life. I don't normally pick up chicks in bars, but... You're special, kind of like the sunrise in Italy. Have you ever been? You would love it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Are you inviting me to go to Italy with you? <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is just so asinine. <laughs> I'm going to get another free soda. The sunrise. <laughs> You ready? Uh. <laughs> no, I, I am the designated. Ah. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, man, that dang old pigeon's freaking out, man. I... It's the chemicals. He's tripping and pretty hard. Come on, we'll get you through this, little fella. I don't know why you need to go out with her tonight, but I'm not going to stop you. I'm so nervous. Can you smell my armpit? I don't think my deodorant's working. Dale, you cannot go. You just tell your little friend to go on home. Well, that's not very friendly. I never told you to tell your friend John Redcorn to go home. See you in the morning. This is going to be a long night, Shug. Thanks for waiting with me. Mm-hmm. We will get through this together. Oh, 
Maintain. 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 Yeah, man, you just, you're at home, you know, you're just chilling with your lady in your nest, you know, got a little beard on the sky, you know, man. You, you know, you, you, poop, you did poop on my car, you know, but don't, we don't talk about that later, you know. Don't worry about it right now, you know. Yeah. Oh, I just fell down, and you know why? I'm drunk. So am I! But you're our driver. I can't drive, and you can't drive. How are we gonna drive if we can't drive? Yeah, I know, it's terrible, but I put this song on. It's mine. You've played the same damn song six times in a row. A new rule. You can't listen to my song anymore. Ugh, I'm having so much fun, you guys. Uh, happy birthday, Luann. Let's do this every Friday night. This is so great. For the first time in my life, I feel like I'm really detecting rat urine. Dale, all we ever talk about is work. Let's take a break. This is beautiful. Where are we? It's where I park when the world doesn't make any sense to me. Does this make any sense? Mm -hmm. Look at all those pests out there. I wonder if we'll ever win this war. Don't you just find the mating habits of animals fascinating? When a pigeon wants to mate, it makes this noise. Interesting. When cockroaches want to mate, they flush all the air out of their book lungs. It sounds kind of like... Well, it's getting late. You want to go downstairs? I got us a room. I'm warming up some brandy in the coffee maker. Wait a second. Are you attempting to know me? Dale, you are one of the sweetest, gentlest, funniest men I've ever met. True. But Sheila, I'm married. It's just us tonight. Oh, no, Missy. There are three people here tonight. You, me, and my wife. I've taken two oaths in my life. One to the NRA, and the other to Nancy Hicks Gribble. Nay, Nancy Hicks. I stood in front of God and all my friends, swearing to be an honorable and truthful man. So I'm not going to lie, I, I have felt a very small insect-like attraction for you. But my wife is the greatest woman there ever was! I think you should go. Jeez, woman, take a hint. You heard me. I love my wife. Dale? Man, you should have seen the size of this roach I couldn't kill. We are never staying at the Econo Suites. Hey, did you know Sheila was trying to come on to me? No. Really? Yeah, she was all over me. It was weird. She knows I'm married. Oh, wingo, I didn't miss my show. You want to watch it with me? Sure.
You think I'd meet more women if I changed my name to Tango? Don't change your name again, Bill. Con has a mother? Somehow I always pictured a pod situation. Min? You are very lucky to have a man like Khan to care for you. You must be sure always to show your appreciation. Oh, what helpful suggestion. I do that right away. Ah. Min, your stew looks nice. But I would add just a bit more oyster sauce for a richer flavor, if I may. <laughs> if I may just demonstrate. Hey, Grandma. I just... Uh-oh. Already? <laughs> if I may just demonstrate. I hate to leave two such beautiful women, but I must go and bring home the bacon for you both. I will miss you, Kong Koi Khan. <laughs> I will go sit in the dining room for a while. Yeah, knock yourself out. What are you doing? Oh, just some cleaning. No, Lao Ma. It's not necessary. I cleaned house yesterday just fine. If I may just demonstrate. <laughs> well, hello. I am Peggy Hill. Lao Ma Supanu Simpon. Mrs. Hill, I must respectfully say that you are missing an opportunity for the greatest cleanliness of your windows. I beg your pardon? You use improper wiping motion, if you would allow me to demonstrate. I was a homemaker for 40 years, and I found that I truly enjoyed cleaning. Well, my favorite part of cleaning is being done, huh? <laughs> well, I see you don't relax by laughing. If you find no joy in housework, perhaps you would do better with a housekeeper. Oh, well, I've had fantasies about it, believe me. We just don't have that kind of money. Please, Mrs. Hill, I would not charge much. You know my daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. I really need to get out of the house. Deal. You can call me Miss Peggy. And this, as you can see, is the kitchen. There's the sink, the oven, the floor, the... Yes. It is like many kitchens I have seen. I will find my way. What is she doing? She's cleaning our house for practically nothing. That washcloth costs more than her. Now get out before she changes her mind. Bev, Bev, Beverly Hills Cop, Bev. Bev, Beverly Hills Cop, actual phony gonna find those drugs. <laughs> Mama gonna throw garbage all over here, Lon. How I love her. No, not there. Oh, how that spiteful. But what's she... This crazy! You survived brutal dictatorship in communist states only to become slave in America? Oh, don't be silly, Khan. Now, does this Hank name tag look clean enough to you? I just don't like the idea of having a maid. I don't even feel right having a waiter clear my plate. So why don't you fire her? Because that would be even more wrong than it was to hire her. <sighs> nope. I'm afraid we'll have to keep her on with us now till she dies. Now that very clever prank you play, Hank Hill. You take advantage of poor old defenseless woman to spite neighbor. Wait till your mother come here on rocking chair tied to roof of car. I make her dance for nickels. Bingo, Bevan, Van. I've never seen this woman clean anything, but I enjoy her work. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hill. Oh, hi, Loma. Please continue to watch your sports game. I will not disturb you. Oh, I know. I know. I'm just stretching my legs. <sighs> Uh-oh. Sticky stain. <clears throat> no, Mr. Hill. It is okay. You stay and watch. I insist. Ah! Ah! Oh, God. Time for afternoon snack. Ye you brought me a snack? You are the male child of the family. Your responsibility is great, and so must be your nourishment. Melted cheese, roast beef, sauerkraut. This is a Reuben sandwich. 
I wasn't expecting this. Uh, <clears throat> I gotta sit down. Oh, me and my heart is breaking. With every speck of dirt Mama cleaned from Hillbilly's toilet, hit one more speck of dirt on my face. Your mother must not be treated like a caged bird. We must let her fly, even if it's just across the street for a few hours a day. Tomorrow, Mama's day off. I must find her new way to occupy time. Something she can do here in-house, instead of in Cracker Shack next door. Day off? So she'd be here tomorrow? With me? Mm -hmm. Howdy, fellas. I see you are all relaxing after a hard day of work. Yeah, yeah well, you know. Dad's just having a beer. I bet you wish you had super clean homes to go to, like your buddy Hank. Ah, well, yeah. Well, there's good news. My mother-in-law has remaining shifts available at unbeatable prices. Who sign up first? Heck, I'll take a day. I could use some Asian fingerprints in there. Why not you, Bill? Have you become emotionally attached to your many rats and cockroaches? No. They can leave any time they want. I wouldn't care. So hire Lauma. She's practically free. Well, maybe I should. I just always figured I'd have to be rich to be clean. This will take me months. Thank you, Bill. Huh? <laughs> ah! Oh, Loma, I can't thank you enough. My house is clean, my clothes are clean, I'm clean. And I can't believe how many forks you found. It has been my pleasure. It is a curious thing. I moved here only to be closer to my son. It has been a lovely surprise that I have also found something to do. Yes, lovely. Oh, something's on your mind. As a barber, I've seen that look on my own face in the mirror many a time. Well, there is still a void that neither family nor work can fulfill. Yeah, there's a void in my life, too. It's nice to talk to someone who has the same void. Loma, forgive me if I'm out of line, but would you ever consider spending time with me? You know, outside of my house? A heart attack took my husband away from me to the next life, but I believe he returned as the gentle wind that blows through this meadow, even now. My God, that's the most beautiful description of a haunted meadow I've ever heard. My heart, it's been broken so many times. I will be gentle, if I may demonstrate. Oh, well. no. So, you guys go to things. Anybody know where I can get two tickets to love letters at the Arlen Little Theater? Good Lord, has your ass gotten so fat you need two seats? No. I have a friend. You can't take a pigeon to the theater, Bill. For your information, she happens to be a lady. And we really like each other. <laughs> I got to tell you, things got pretty hot and heavy last night. Oh, man. Oh. Good one, man. Way to go, Bill. Anyone we know? Yep. It's Con's mom. <laughs> oh, God dang, man. Bill, she's 20 years older than you. She's literally an old maid. My God, she's perfect for you. Congratulations, Bill. No, oh, thanks. So how does Con feel about all this? No, oh, we haven't told him yet. It'll probably take him some getting used to, and we don't want to upset him until the relationship is on a sure footing. Yo, man, dang old nine o'clock, man. The chief! My mother get home two hours late last night. You work her overtime? <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry, Con. We lost track of the hour. Well, that unacceptable. Every time my mother come back from your house, she's sweaty and exhausted. <laughs> come on, guys, cool it. From now on, you stop riding us so hard. <laughs> you need to use the bathroom, Mr. Hill? Uh, no, 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 I just, uh... It's okay. I come back when you're done. No, no, really, I'll, I'll just, uh, do it later. I insist you go to the bathroom immediately. I will wait outside until you have finished. Oh. <sighs> Uh, are you still out there? Yes. Do you require assistance, Mr. Hill? No. 
For three years now, I've had show turtles, and I've never once put them in a show. I'm a freaking hypocrite. Any of you seen my mother? Well, that depends. How are you at receiving unspeakably awful news? Dale! <laughs> oh, there she is. Wait a minute. That's not her house cleaning outfit. <laughs> huh. What'd he do that for? Oh. Anybody want to watch the game? Why, Mama? Why not instead become bag lady or actress in pornographic film? Why must you humiliate me in worst way imaginable? Khan, I do not mean to shame you. I am an old, lonely woman. Bill, such a big, strong man. When I in his arms, I feel like delicate little hummingbird, and he must... Ah! Too vivid! No! Don't you love me? Well, of course I do. You're my mama. Khan, if you love me, you will try to love Bill. Oh, we just... Say it. I... I... I will try to... Love... Bill. No, oh, I swear, Lawman, I must have been the handsomest couple in that noodle house last night. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, you should have seen the way people's heads turned when we walked in together. Oh, I guess there's just something about a couple that's deeply, deeply in love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, you should have seen the way Lauma flirted with the mater d' to get us a table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill, stop. Right. Stop, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to lose her for a minute there, folks. <laughs> Bill, you know I flirt only with you. Oh, yeah, I, that one is true. It's true. She's like a teenager. Oh, she nearly caused me to hit the guardrail driving home. Oh. Oh, feeling dizzy and short of breath. I think I'm having a stroke. No, don't get up. <laughs> and call me a crazy dreamer if you want, but are we the only intelligent life in the universe? I don't think so. Mm. Yes, Miss Peggy. Explain the pyramids. You can't. No, no, no! For love of all things holy, now my mother swill beer in alley like full-blown redneck. Relax, Khan. She's happy out there. And your mother's happiness is the only thing that matters to me. Uh, but what if people in office find out? Ah, used to be I could go to work and brag about my family. I tell them, my daughter a genius. She built perfect replica of Lunar Module for advanced placement science class. They have no retort. Now, anything I say, they counter with, Ah, how's that six-toed possum baby your mother have with redneck? What do you think, Dad? Does this look like a convincing replica of Harrison Schmidt? Huh, astronaut turned senator. Now this is the kind of man who should be dating my mother. Man who conquer moon. Not man who conquer moon pie. Todd, I'm so delighted that you finally come to see me. Yeah, ah. Oh. Ah, I wish I could come here under happier circumstances. Well, any problem of yours is a problem of mine. Yeah, actually, this one or yours. See, hear the thing. My mama has fallen in love with another man. <gasps> An astronaut. Which one? Harrison Schmidt. <sighs> Listen, can you fly a spaceship? No. Ah, uh, then this could be problem. But, but, we're in love. Oh, come on, Bill. You know it was only a matter of time before she leaves you, like your uh, wife did. No, I suppose you're right. But why didn't you tell me yourself? Because she pity you. Yeah, Mama way too nice to hurt you just so she could find true happiness. So I guess she just live out her days in miserable, unsatisfying relationship with you. The important thing is that Bill gets what Bill wants. Barely really none of my business. I show myself out. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Bill, are you not well? I... I'm okay. No, something is wrong. Usually you're looking bottom of bow by now. <sighs> you are breaking up with me. Sometimes you have to move on to find true happiness. New people show up into other people's lives. Sometimes wearing space helmets, I guess. The this is what you want? Well, I think in the long run, it's better for both of us. Don't you think? Oh, yes, of course. Good. Then we're broken up. <gasps> There's a full moon tomorrow night. 
Now I guess you can enjoy it with someone who's been there. <laughs> what a rush! Maybe next I break up Hank and Peggy. Oh. <sighs> I'm not gonna pretend that I really got you two, but you seemed happy. Why'd you break up with her? Well, she was clean, I was dirty, something had to give. You'll get a new woman soon, Bill. Remember, you scored with an older chick. You're the man now. Oh, no, wait, I was thinking of high school, sorry. <sighs> Mama, time to trim my ear hair. Oh, you're doing laundry, good. Min refuses to iron my socks. No, Con, I am leaving. Though I will try to get a few loads done before I go. Pine and Brook Acres? It is a combination retirement home and cemetery. It's really quite convenient. What? Well, well, everything perfect now! Everybody happy! I am sorry. But it is too hard to have Bill so close. And the home will be fun. I am sure there will be parties where they make us wear little paper hats. Oh, still undercooked. unbe freaking leaveable Damn that Lauma. She just waltzes into my life, teases me with labor at slave wages, and then runs off to a nursing home. No soup? Where's the fish course? This isn't right. I'm the firstborn male. Look, I should be in the warm tub right now, contemplating. <sighs> uh, what the hell are you doing, Bill? Uh, sorry. It's just that this is where Lauma and I first made love. Ugh. Oh. I don't get it, Bill. You broke up with Laoma and now you're pining over her? I only broke up with her because I found out she was involved with an astronaut. What? Uh-huh. Harrison Schmidt. And I didn't want to stand in the way of her being with such a great guy. Look, I don't know about any... Harrison Schmidt? Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, look, whoever it is, you just have to go to Laoma, somewhere far away from my front stoop, and make sure you tell her how you feel about her and that nobody can take care of her better than you can. Yeah. But Con said... Don't worry about what Con or anybody else says. You've got to take your best shot. And then if she chooses someone else, well, at least you tried. Look out, Spaceman Bill. Dowtrieve is coming through. I hate to see you so unhappy because of... Bill Dowtrieve? But, uh... Well, who knows why he does what he does? Okay, time's a-wasting. Loma! Bill? Loma, wait. Don't go. I am sorry. I must. Where is he taking you, Houston? Cape Canaveral? Okay. Don't tree finally snap. Come on, we go inside. Call 911. Look, I don't care about your rocket boy, and I don't care what kind of gifts he makes you. You want to know what I think of him? Hey! I never stopped loving you, Loma. I just wanted to let you find happiness with Astronaut Schmidt. But I know you'll only find true happiness with me. Oh, Bill. Wait, Astronaut who? Yes, Harrison Schmidt. Khan told me everything. Khan? Mama, it not what he looked like. I only did it because the thought of you two together make me sick to the very pit of my stomach. Oh, come on. Like, you all wouldn't have done the same thing if Doe Tree was after your mother? No, Lou. No.
budding thespians of TLMS, I give you the cast list of Oklahoma. I'm in a dance number. It will be an honor to work with you. I think you'll find my portrayal of Curly to be both sensitive and gruff. Now, where are you, Curly? Ah, hello there. Ken Hayashi? Sorry, Bobby. Kenny just has a certain rootin' tootin' quality about him. His brother had it, too. Yeehaw! <laughs> Wonderful. Let's get a move on. I want to get to the flea market while the tube sock guy's still there. Oh, Hank, just cut the pom-poms off and wear a pair of mine. Our boy is just sulking in bed in his pajamas and a cowboy hat. You know, if you ask me, there might be a silver lining to him not being a dancing cowboy. Hank, we both know he is not like you, but you are still his father. So go in there and sympathize with him. It's just, the tube sock guy always brings that old German shepherd, and if it gets too hot, I know he's gonna have to take him home. <sighs> I just can't believe it. I thought it was meant to be. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's terrible. It's just terrible. Terrible. It's a beautiful day out there. Why don't you get dressed, uh, throw out that hat, and go hang out with your friends? I can't. Joseph's at football practice, and Connie's at one of her recitals. They both got things they're good at. I always thought performing was my thing. You've seen me fall down. I can cry on demand. Why? See? Uh, well, we just need to find you a new thing. A cool new thing, and I know just the place to find it. Ah, the flea market. It's like America's garage. You know, somewhere in all this old stuff is the new you, son. Hey, a lawnmower engine. Get a truck dolly and an old steering wheel, and you could be the go-kart guy. Come on, it's not that hot. Here, why don't you take a lap? See what you come up with. Hey, what are those? Oh, those are tarot cards. People use them to tell the future. They're like baseball cards for hobbits. I'll take them. Hey, Bobby, ready to roll? Oh, so you found something. Yeah, I bought these really cool cards. Well, all right, Bobby. Everybody respects a guy who's good at cards. Really? Well, sure. That's why they always get nicknames like Amarillo Slim or the Cincinnati Kid. I know. I'll call you Ace. Now focus all your energy on this card and it will foretell your future. The Ten of Swords. It means advantage, profit, success. Boy, hey, that's great. Things have been going pretty well for me. You know, with my girlfriend, Laoma, and... Oh, wait. It's upside down. That means something. Pain, affliction, tears, sadness, desolation. Oh, for the love of Mordecai. Oh, I see you're into tarot. How long have you divined the cards? Couple of days. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> the only thing you can predict with these is a coincidence. No. If you want any accuracy at all, you need a Mantegna deck, or at least a Fibia. Huh. Sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Yeah, sounds like. As a 14th level sorcerer, I'd be a joke if I didn't. Of course, forecasting the future is just the beginning. The real power of magic, and that's magic with a CK, comes in manipulating the present. Ward! I told you to clean that bathroom a half hour ago. I'm right on it, Chief. Hey, I want to learn more about this stuff. Listen, young friend. Do not let anyone see this address. Arrive exactly at the stroke of four. Ward! And bring some potato chips. Today, Merlin! Oh, why is mighty Heredia to please do smite and... Damn it, Dale. You gotta stop painting your house number on my curb. Sorry, Hank, but I gotta lay low for a while. You have no idea how far the jackals at the Franklin Mint will go to collect the debt. Is it okay if I'm a little late for dinner? My friend Ward invited me to a gathering. Uh, gee, Bobby, you put me in an awkward position. You really should be asking your father. Now who's this Ward fella? I met him at the video store. He saw my card pouch and we got to talking. So I'm gonna hang out with him and his friends tonight. I'm bringing the chips. Well, see, Bobby, I knew you'd find your thing. 
And doesn't that sound like more fun than being in a musical about Oklahoma? Welcome to the Coven of Artemis. Wow, cool air. I suppose introductions are in order. Bobby, meet Vaughn, Noram Woodbender, Pan the Soothsayer, and of course, the master of disaster, Mitchell Jefferson. You can't just bring outsiders to our meetings. It's okay, Mitchell. He's cool. You're supposed to- I said he's cool. Welcome. Bobby, be forewarned. Because of the powers of the coven, people fear us. When we walk down the streets, mothers steer their babies away. Shopkeepers close their stores. Holy, this looks like something out of Harry Potter. Dude, I just vouch for you. Uh, if Harry Potter went to hell. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This, Bobby, is nutmeg. And we use the spice for... Um, oh, I remember. Give me a second. A invincibility. Resplendent! The spices sit easily upon you. Oh, I see you boys are making a cake. A cake? Yeah, a cake of tremendous power. <laughs> <laughs> Score one for the acolyte. Fumble, Joseph Dribble. As much as I hate seeing my boy play badly, I do enjoy hearing his name over the loudspeaker. Sorry, but I gotta blow off the last quarter. I told the guys I'd meet them in the parking lot. No when to hold him, Ace. Go get him, Shuffles. Uh-oh. Ace is gonna need this. Hey, any of you kids seen Bobby Hill? Blonde hair, card player? Mm hmm. Oh, that's okay. He must be tailgating over there. Forces of fire, beings of the south, we command you to rise and lend us your power. Interloper! What the hell are you people doing? Hey, Dad! Bobby? Meet the guys, or as we like to call ourselves, the Coven of Artemis. Bah! Here I am thinking you're playing a nice, honest game of poker, and instead you're summoning the Prince of Dragons? <laughs> Check out the dork. Can I hide it to the clock? You can't play poker with these cards, Dad. <laughs> That's a good way to bring down the wrath of lewd. It's all here in the book I bought. $45? The family Bible cost less than that, and it was written by Jesus. Yeah, but this book tells you how to summon wood nymphs and water sprites. <sighs> all right, look, I know you're at an age where you think all this stuff is interesting, but believe me, it really isn't. But you told me to find a new thing, and then when I do, you just want to take it away from me. They're my circle of power. <sighs> believe me, Bobby, I'm doing it for your own good. Now, we're not going to tell your mother about this. I know she shields me from a lot of the things you do, and... Well, I'm going to return the favor on this one. Harness the energy of the crystal. Well done, Noram. Your powers are growing stronger. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, young apprentice, something is on your mind. I can sense it. My dad says I can't hang out with you guys anymore. I guess he thinks magic is dumb. Magic is dumb? Does this look dumb? Huzzah! Don't make me come over there! Noram, are you trying to get us kicked out of here? Sorry. Bobby, the problem with your father is he's ungifted. Our kind have always been persecuted by those who understand not. From the Salem trials of the 1600s to the locker room beatings and bathroom swirlies of today, tis all one. So that's why my dad is so weird about this. He's threatened by my powers. Bobby, the mark of Merlin is upon you. When you have completed your training, you will be a white wizard. Really? Wow, what do I have to do? When can I start? Hmm, your training begins now. You can start by refilling my root beer. It was wise that you came to me, but be forewarned that I am merely the vessel through which the powers flow. Are you gonna help us get our kickball off the roof? Silence! By the breath of Hecates, I summon the winds of the north to blow. Blow, I say! Bobby, a word, please. Resplendent. Before we get started, I'd like to know the proper term for your religion. 
You know, what's a politically correct term for which? Hank, what is going on here? Uh, nothing. Bobby just got a little carried away with this new club, but there's nothing to worry about. He's quitting. I think everyone's just a little uptight. Why don't I summon up a tranquility spirit so we can all rest easy? Oh, powers of ancient bull or doom. I can't have him praying in my office. The school board's very clear on that. He's not praying, and he's stopping right now. Hank, I may be a mother, but I am still a woman, and I know a girl repellent when I see it. Oh, I want grandchildren. Will you fix this? Uh, Mr. Rackley? Yes? Yeah, I'd like to have a word with you about your son, Ward. You see, he and my boy Bobby are playmates Excuse and... me, but I'm Ward Rackley. You're Ward Rackley? It's one of my many monikers, yes. I'm also known as Mandelgar of the Northwoods, and in certain company... Austin Osman Strachlevartard. How old are you? 30? 40? Uh, not even close. I am 5,000. Don't you have some friends your own age? Someone to drink with? Maybe a girlfriend? And waste my seed on a common harlot? Not likely. When the time is right, a maiden will be delivered up to me. Probably from the East. <sighs> some of this isn't your fault. I mean, a man can only take so many wedgies before he goes to pieces. Good luck to you, buddy, and stay away from my son or I'll kick your ass. You don't understand who you threaten. I have powers, terrible powers! Ma? <sighs> okay, we tried it your way, now you're doing it my way. This is a carburetor. Take it apart, put it back together, repeat until you're normal. But Dad, the dark arts are nothing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid of that garbage. I'm afraid of you getting your ass kicked every day for the rest of your life because you found a new way to act like a nerd. Ward said you wouldn't understand. Bobby, you don't need a crystal ball to see Ward's future. He's going to live with his mother until she dies, and maybe for a few weeks after. Now, until you stop with all this nonsense, I want you to take your carburetor and go to your room. I know my dad must have come off as some kind of nut job, but you've got to believe I'm completely committed to our power circle. Are you? I wonder. I think you'd be able to control your father as effectively as I control mother. Nevertheless, Bobby's daddy has shown us that persecution of our kind is on the rise. Perhaps it's time to take our powers to the next level. Yes, Approved. thank you. Tonight, we are going to kick it up a notch and summon a dread force that will bestow upon us unequaled power. And of course, we'll need someone to be the chalice holder. I'll do it. Excellent, my young apprentice. You'll learn that white wizard cone yet. We will convene at the ceremony grounds at half past the eighth hour. Assuming that fat ass lets me leave on time. Cool. So, uh, what does the chalice holder do anyway? You hold the chalice during the incantation, then right after we light the candles, you drink Caninus Spiritus! What's Caninus Spiritus? Dog blood. What? You are the chosen one, Bobby. Soon and for all time, you will be known throughout the land as Robert the Dog Quaffer. <laughs> Have you uh, checked out John Redcorn's New Age Healing Center? You really should. On Friday nights, John Redcorn and his band, Big Mountain Fudge Cake, will be playing. I'm John Redcorn. I told you, no more flyers. Hey, Bobby, you like to rock. Huh? I'm just reading up on ancient ceremonies where people had to drink animal blood. Oh, there's got to be a loophole somewhere. You're losing me. You can't tell anyone this. Promise me? Bobby, I give you my oath as a New Age healer. Okay, this group of guys I hang with, we're doing a ceremony tonight, and they want me to drink the dog blood. Dog? Ugh, that's just weird. I have to do it. I can't do theater. I can't do sports. If I can't drink something gross, what have I got? I had a breakthrough last night with my fruit rehydrator. Can you believe a mere 12 hours ago, these plump, luscious grapes were raisins? Well, Hank, there's something that I think you should know. Something very personal and disturbing. Sounds like we should leave. What is it, John Redcorn? Bobby's going to drink dog blood. Ah! What? 
It's part of some ceremony his friends have cooked up, and it's going down tonight. No god dang way. I'm not gonna let Bobby be branded a freak for the rest of his life. Before we get started, a debt of gratitude is owed to Brother Vaughn for procuring the offering. My mom's new boyfriend's a veterinarian. He lets me call him Rick. <laughs> oh, resplendent. Now, everyone, if you would all be so good as to take your positions on the pentagram. Uh, Ward, a pentagram has five points, but there's only four bases. Why do you always test me, Mitchell? Just go stand at shortstop. We don't have your cat. I'm looking for my son, Bobby. Is Ward there? Well, his bicycle isn't here, so he must be gone. Want to come in? Oh, <laughs> whoops. We humbly come before you to ask for your magnificent strength and wisdom. Oh. All right, everybody, party's over. Oh, sorry. I'm looking for a bunch of warlocks. Warlocks? You know, nerds and capes and stuff. Oh, yeah. We kicked him out about an hour ago. The tall guy geeked hard. I cast a spell on his ass with my foot. And now, in the melding of our joint world, our white wizard will ingest the elixir, Caninus Spiritus. White, white, white wizard. wizard. White, white wizard. wizard. White, white wizard. wizard. Bobby, now. Do it now. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Every gifted one passes through the bog of doubt. Now do it. I can't. You have to. Do it now, before the moon wanes. Yeah, yeah, yes, right, before the moon wanes. I'm sorry. I, I just can't do it. It's gross. Then we will have to destroy you. Destroy us, Bobby us, Hill us. Oh my God! My dad was right about you guys. Under these cool robes and hats, you're all just a bunch of losers. Silence, insolent one. Accept your fate. Dizah! Oh! Oh! Ah. You guys are so nerdy. Even I feel like giving you a wedgie. I was wrong about him. He is ungifted and deserves nothing but our censure. Thanks for the robe, fellas. Oh, there's some dragon feathers in the pocket. Help yourself. Well, I guess I was able to make him disappear. Mitchell, how would you like to be the chalice holder? <laughs> no? Anybody? Well, no reason to waste perfectly good canina spiritus. Let's find an overpass. Bobby! Hey, Dad. Uh, are you okay? You, uh, you, you didn't drink the dog blood, did you? Me? Drink dog blood? That's not my thing. Well, good for you. I mean, to tell you the truth, those guys are a little pathetic. Can you believe Ward was wearing socks with his sandals? Unbelievable. I guess I still need to find exactly what my thing is. Well, that's okay, son. You've still got time. I didn't really find football till high school. And I was in my 20s when I found...
Yo. Dead gum, dude. Man, talking big old bite apple, man. Talking lots of dead gum by the cow. Oh, man, you talking about him? No, no, look it down. Look. Dang. Dead gum, big weak jingle, bang it up, dog. It's like, woo! Yeah, baby. Wow, so your little brother Patch is getting married. Now that calls for a beer. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, you boys were always competing over something. Who could sell the most copies of Grit? Who could bag the most groceries? Who could bag the most ladies? It was always close, but it was always Boomhauer. Yeah, but Patch finally beat Boomhauer at something. <laughs> His way to the altar. Oh, don't worry, Boomhauer. Patch might have beat you to the altar, but you'll beat him to the grave. As a bachelor, your life expectancy is seven years shorter than us blissfully marrieds. Even Bill gets a couple of years credit for that charade of a marriage of his. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Dang old journey, man. Ain't no, ain't no race. Yo, get good Catherine Hester, man. Come on now. Oh, I can't believe it's been 12 years. I just got into town a half hour ago. Like a down, talking about destiny, man. Talking about on planet's line, you know, like a, just like a big, big, big old dipper, man. Oh, man, that dang old smile. You remember getting our uh, bracelet cut down a hook like that, man? Talking about no pain, no gain. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about you a lot lately. Oh, man, that dang old truth, man. Well, yeah. I mean, I am marrying your brother. You? You mean that no, no, patch? You talking about my patch? I guess I'm gonna be Mrs. Boomhauer after all. I was actually on my way to the airport to pick him up. When you see him, could you act surprised? That's perfect. See you in a bit. So your brother's Marion Catherine. She made the best beer. Yep. Wow, it's like if the Russians landed on the moon after we did and then married it. Sorry, Boomhauer. Boomhauer's okay. He had his chance to land Catherine in the boat years ago. Instead, he cut the line. Hey, man, it's just like dang old history, man. Yeah! <laughs> oh, man, Eddie, here, here they come. Go, act, act like a surprise, man. Gentlemen, enter the dang old deucing, daggum future Mr. Patch. Boom, heart! Oh, Unbelievable. Geez. Catherine, is it not? Dang old stand there, black t shirt, looking off sharp, man. With a hair all scruffy on top that way, man. It's, come here. Yeah, okay, okay, man. Okay. Hey, but, but god dang it, man. Don't wake up in the dang old line, man. Man, hey, come on. Hey, hey, ow, ow, ow. Daggum jaw, man. Talking TMJ, man. Come on. Okay, oh, come on. Shoot, man, yeah, that's, that's what, like, got me out of the daggum Porter John business. Dang old quick, like, man, I'm telling you, like, ooh, that talking Andy Dump, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patch. Mm. I tell you what, the blood runs hot in that Boomhauer family. Yeah, that Patch got it going on. But he a dog. I can smell it from here. You know, I still remember the day Catherine left for London. Boomhauer stayed in his hot tub for two straight days. I have never seen a man look so unhappy, yet so relaxed. Like <laughs> Bobby, what are you doing? I want to show Patch I've got what it takes to be a ring boy. It's ring bearer, and that's Ladybird's job. Besides, you're old enough to be an usher. An usher? Wow. Sir, come back when you have a tie. Yo, shush it. Talking about start a little boy. Big brother, man. Femi dirt and dog on bugs, but, you know, long story short, man. Talking about best man. Yo. Very touching, but something tells me this is not over. Do you take this burger to be your dinner? So, uh, Boomhauer, how you doing there? No well, man, you know, this thing will be a little warm, but, you know, I just hope you're ready to be thinking of her as your sister-in-law. Hey, man, I ain't got no dang old problem here, man. You know, talking about you got a little, your son of yours, man, walking around carrying a dang old little burger on a pillow, man. You, you... Okay, we, we're here to congratulate a patch of Catherine Dang, you cannonball! Well, watch with that animal dang old cannonball, man. 
Hello, Mr. Boomhauer. Thanks for letting me borrow your Walkman. I broke it. Talking about me out here, kitty, kitty. Pass it for you, man. Dad, come find you a place to sit, darling. Oh. This little old kidder, man. You know, every dang old April Fool's growing up, he's about putting up a little frog in my bed. You know, like it's just old patch, man. Woo, dogs. That's a sweet taste, man. Look forward to that meal, you know, like. Ow, chicken, ow. Mm. You know, you got to talk about the thing about a new, turn on a new leaf with old Catherine, man. You got to love vows, man. Talk about vows. Yo, man, talking about eating at home, man. Except for drive through window action now and then, man. Talking about fast food, baby. Yeah, they don't grow up, man. Yep. Yep. Get off me, Mick! Come on! Now, calm down, guy. both of you. I can't understand a word you're saying. Shoot, man, I mean, man, just talking wedding, man. Goes off. That gum jealousy, man. Ugly, green-eyed monster, man. You must settle this like men. Angry, redneck men. Blunderbusses at 20 paces. <sighs> Dang it, Boomhauer. Your brother is getting married, and you need to start acting right. Talk about it to him, man. He's the one who got up dang old hoochie-coochie dance, hey, man. Hey, man, no, you too much hoochie-coochie man talking. You ain't no best man after all. No way yeah, man, you, don't, you can't fire me, man, because I'll tell you what, man, I don't quit. <gasps> oh, no. That gum can't have no wedding with no best man, man. Hold the ring, get the speech, man. You know, throw the bats to party, man. You know, that gum, man, you know, talking about Mike. Whoa. Never... Me? Your best man? Well, I... <sighs> Patch, I'd be honored. Well, what was I gonna do? Let Patch have a wedding without a best man? Boomhauer had his chance with Catherine. Maybe this is just the kick in the pants Boomhauer needs to snap him out of that Peter Pan lifestyle. You know, maybe you're right. He's not getting any younger, and all the women he dates are. Something's gotta give. So, what are Patch and Catherine serving at their wedding? I need to know what color tux to get, you know, stain-wise. Hey, uh, Boomhauer, we're gonna start planning the bachelor party at my place tonight. You wanna join us? Remember how much fun you had at our bachelor parties? Some people call me the space cowboy. Hey, Bill, can you yeah. grab me a beer? Some call me the gangster of love. <laughs> 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 like a like a damn party, man. <laughs> Hey, Some Hank, could you grab me a beer? Yeah. Hey, man, Dale, why, why don't you go, get, get me a dang old beer, man? Yeah. Ah! Well, what is it, a bomb? Ah! 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 Hello, Boomhauer. I heard you dropped out as Patch's best man. I, dang, I, I don't want to say, say nothing about the dang old... Dial back the charm. We've got some talking to do. I really want us to work things out, because I couldn't stand the idea of my kids not knowing their Uncle Boomhauer. Man, it, it's just a dang old complicated, you know, man? It's like a dang old Rubik's Cube, man. You like talking about blue, red, man, then you get to one side, and then you like mess, mess it up the other side, man. Well, I truly hope that you'll at least come to the wedding. Well, dang old... I, 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 I'll, I'll be there, man. Hey, Patch, we're all geared up for one heck of a bachelor party tomorrow night. We got you three kinds of sausage and two kinds of pizza. You can eat yourself silly, bachelor. Shoot, man, talking about entertainment, man. Time to shake things up, man. Get live, get wild, you know, talking GoPro. Professional entertainers? Wow. Dang, I'm right, man. I'll have him call you. You know, dang old, bring plenty of singles, huh? Chick bow, bow. Mm. Uh, I wish Boomhauer could see how happy Patch is. So what do you suppose the live entertainment is? Karaoke. <laughs> well, he did say it would be wild. Tomorrow night from 7 to 10 p.m., the family room is reserved for a bachelor party. I've got a variance from the city. They're letting us have 70 decibels, same as Bennigan's. Well, we are having a bachelorette party for Catherine, and Min is bringing three Patrick Swayze movies. Bobby, now I can't officially invite you to the bachelor party, 
But if a certain usher sneaked in and had a snappy tom or maybe some unattended Collins mixer, I'd be too busy to notice. Hill residence. Yeah, this is Craig T of KT Entertainment. We have you booked for the use of some special talent tomorrow night. Is that correct? Oh, yes, yes, the party planner. Now, the groom mentioned that he would like a happy ending. You cool with that? Of course. He's getting married. Wait, I got to talk to the other one. Oh, man, it'll dang, 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 beautiful, man. Mm, I'm sure somehow it's bad luck for you to see me in my gown. <laughs> Will you try to stop by Patch's bachelor party? Knowing Patch, it'll be pretty tame. But I'm sure there'll be good food and good music. Catherine, man, you know, I, I don't want to go against blood or nothing like that, but, man, you know, got, got to keep enough dang old eye on Patch, man. Boomhauer! I never thought I'd have to pull you in the garage like I do with Bill and Dale. Hey, man. The time for you to stop this wedding was 20 years ago before you broke up with Catherine. You need to grow up. Patch did. Man, and, and you don't understand, man. It I think I understand plenty. But you need to suck it up and get with the program. Edible underpants. Made from the same stuff as fruit roll-up, so don't sit on anything dusty. Game time! 101 bachelorette party games. For the first game, we will need nail polish and a summer squash. Uh, uh, why don't we go see what the guys are up to? Gentlemen, there's only one rule, and that is to have fun. And to tip generously. Well, since you're here to MC, I'm gonna go get the hot wings. I could use a little help. Gents, there is a special menu available for special requests. All right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let's get the bachelor! Patch! 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 Hey, man, if that's no, no way, man, I'm talking about the sanctity of marriage, man. They're gonna just don't get on out. There go mine on mine, man. Talking front and red. Man, now here is some damn money down here. Just don't get, get on out of here, man. Hold on now. Come on, baby. Give me a bed top slot, man. I'm talking once upon my lap. Get them while they're hot. Wow, you didn't tell me about this part, Dad. Bobby, close your eyes and go to your room. Man, here's money, dang old. Just leave, man. Boomhauer, what are you doing? Hi. Patch? Dead gumbo. Help, Boomhauer. Told you no hanky panky dangle hijacked by the boom hose. Is this true? Boomhauer, did you pay for these women to. I can't believe you. Marriage may not mean anything to you, but it means a lot to Patch and me and Buck and everyone else here. Hey, man, now I'm talking about. A... I don't want to hear it. Now take your hired floozies and get the hell out. Now, Boomhauer. Guy's not out, man, talking girls. Why? <sighs> I really thought Boomhauer had come around. I mean, he brought beer, but then the prostitutes. Maybe you can work that into your best man speech at the rehearsal dinner. You know, in a funny way. What really bugs me is that Boomhauer flat out lied to me. <sighs> Makes me question our entire friendship. Whoremonger, yes. Liar, unproven. Technically, Boomhauer did not lie to your face. You merely assume that he lied. Wait a minute, you're right. I never asked Boomhauer if he tried to break up Patch and Catherine, so he hasn't actually lied to me yet. If I go to Boomhauer and he comes clean, well, maybe there's a chance we can still be friends. <laughs> Does this dude smell like embalming fluid to you? Now, Boomhauer, as a man, I'm obligated to try to salvage our friendship of over 30 years by asking you some tough questions. <sighs> Do you love Catherine Hester? Yo, man. And does the thought of Patch marrying her tear you up inside? Yo, man. And did you hire those ladies of easy virtue to frame Patch and break up the wedding? No, man. Ah, oh, Boomhauer, I am so sorry for doubting you. But wait a minute, if you didn't hire those girls, then Craig T. Oh, God, Patch knew all along. <laughs> Dang old, yeah, man. No, no, talk about it. Don't get hurt falling off them. Dang old high horse, man. Boomhauer, I deserve all that and more, but right now I need to get to the rehearsal dinner and set things right. I'll give Patch the happy ending he deserves, I tell you what.
Dang old, where's the best man? Dead gum, Hank. Gotta give speech, man. Talking about life's fun or something like that, man. Oh, my God, your Hank is dead on. You know, I do a great Bobby. Excuse me, sir. We have a hard 7 o'clock start time, so I'm gonna... There, Boomhauer. We get a good fight, it'd make up for cash bar. Ooh, dope. Mm. Uh, sorry I'm late. <clears throat> Hank Hill, best man, Strickland Propane. When people get married, as these two plan tomorrow, you've got to act right. You've got to have commitment, devotion, trust. You can't be fooling around, and you surely can't be... There is something I have to say. When Patch first asked me to marry him, it was a dream come true. <sighs> but when I got here, I realized how much Patch reminded me of Boomhauer and that I might be trying to recapture something I lost. And then Boomhauer hired a bunch of prostitutes to make me think Patch was some kind of pervert. And I hated him for it. But it was that desperate, crazy romantic move that made me realize maybe there is something still between Boomhauer and me. I'm sorry, Patch. I cannot marry you. Now, hold on, baby. That gum, no, man. It was on me. Yeah, on me. Talking about frequent bar. Spent Thanksgiving with them hoes, man. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, my. You're the one who hired those strippers? Dang straight, baby. Dang old hopeless romantic. Uh, no. Boomhauer hiring them because he couldn't stand to see us together is a grand romantic gesture. You hiring them is just plain sleazy. It's over, Patch. Dang old no, baby. Talking about not me, man. Talking Hank. Dang old Hank loves hookers, man. Well, here we are saying goodbye again. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do a donut in your front lawn this time. Oh, I just need to go away for a while and get my head together. Hell, man, you talk about it like a dang old roller coaster, man. You know, I talk, you talk about destiny and you know, a big old dipper, man, you know? Well, just like a, like a dang old North Star, man, I'm always gonna be there, man. You know, just like a dang old GPS that hurts gold, man. I feel the same way. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nancy refused to make me eggs Benedict for breakfast again. It's not fair. I'm a good husband. The ones who kill their wives and go to death row get to eat whatever they want. People on death row get to eat whatever they want? For their last meal, yes. Oh, I could never kill anybody. 
No, man, it's like that noise pollution, man. Like them dang old band garbage, man. I don't leach any kind of keep it, you know, like, man. Dang it, Bobby. I'll let Joseph listen to whatever he wants. Of course, I'm afraid of Joseph. Bobby! Dad, what are you doing? Whoa, I gotta sit down. What in the heck is on your head? They're my dreads. Aren't they cool? <laughs> now, I know you've got a rule about wigs, but this is just temporary until I can grow my own. Just like Johnny Glock. Isn't that the guy who got arrested for setting a car on fire? He had to, Dad. He got dissed. Bobby, here's the goatee you wanted. Thanks. Oh, what about the black nail polish? They were out. You will have to use a Sharpie. No. The only way you're having a black nail is if you hit it with a hammer. Why are you encouraging our son to dress like a criminal? Oh, he's just playing, Hank. Gangsters and hoes is his generation's cowboys and Indians. That's what I'm talking about. What's the big deal? I was just rocking out to my music. If you're looking for some entertainment, I do have a very awesome video that you might enjoy. If it's the one about Esau the eggplant and the prodigal cucumber, I've seen it about a thousand times. I hear you, B. You're a teenager and you're looking for something a little more with it. I got your back. Hank, I know an after-school youth group that would be great for Bobby. The pastor there has done some super work with teens. Youth group? Sounds kind of boring. Sounds kind of perfect. Some positive influence is just what Bobby needs. But, Dad, it's after school. What if I want to join a sports team? Nice try. He'll be there. I can't believe you're making me do this. It's so uncool. You know what's not cool, Bobby? Hell. Don't forget your Bible. <sighs> What are you looking at? Hey there, guys. I was just, uh... What's with the suit? You a lawyer's suit? No, uh, I, I, I don't want any trouble. I was just looking for, uh... What are you looking for? I, um... You lost? Lonely? Scared? Yes! Well, then you came to the right place. Look, Kay's dropping in for a double rider. <laughs> Praise him! Yeah! That was awesome! Thanks, but not as awesome as Jesus. You guys are the Christian youth group? Mm -hmm. Pastor K, Stroop said she was sending over a kid who likes to rock out. That you? Yeah. Welcome to the flock. Welcome to, to, the, to the highest! See? Check out what this lucky bastard got for his last meal. Prisoner number 88725. Six pieces of fried chicken, six rolls, Tin roof ice cream, strawberry soda, and lemon pie. Oh, that sounds good. That's what I want. How about this guy? One dozen fried eggs, one loaf of bread, a bowl of salad dressing, french fries, and three cartons of milk. Oh, no, that's what I want. If it were me, I'd choose the world's rarest truffle. Then while they were searching for it, I'd tunnel my way to freedom. Of course, then I'd miss eating the world's rarest truffle. Quite the quandary. I tell you what, man, Tommy, I'd go out in dang old style, man. You know, talking about like dang old rack of lamb, you know, and the little foie gras, you know, my dang old dinner is served. Sorry I'm late. The Weather Channel's got some pretty exciting stuff going on in Missouri. Hey, Dad. I felt like walking home. You know, enjoy this glorious day. So, uh, you have a good time? Yes, it was the best. I met some great guys, and I asked them to come over later if that's okay. Well, of course it's okay. I'll even set up the tether ball. Thanks for making me go, Dad. My son just thanked me for taking him to church. Yes, I switched. Do not start. Awesome. What the? What are you guys doing to that garbage can? That is not its intended use. Hey, guys. Bobby, don't get too close. What are you talking about? These are my friends from the youth group. They're cool and they're totally Christian. Hey, check this out. Yeah. I, well, I don't understand. I... Hey, dude, I'm up. Can you hold my Bible? Uh... You don't have to just hold it. You could read it, you know. Don't tell me to read the Bible. Uh, praise, praise him! Praise him! 
Can you believe the way that kid was sassing me? I was reading the Bible before that little punk was born. Maybe it's just me, but I'd rather Bobby be in a Christian gang than one of those murdering gangs. Well, maybe you're right. Wait, I, I think that one is smoking. Oh, no, he's praying. Thanks for having me over for dinner. Mine was a disaster. I thought hot dogs never went bad. Would anybody mind if I said grace tonight? For sure, Bobby. I want to give a shout out to the man who makes it all happen. Props be to you for this most bountiful meal that sits before us. Okay, check it. God, you've got skills. You represent these vegetables and in this napkin and in the dirt that grows the grain that makes the garlic breadsticks that are on this table today. Yes, yes. Okay, Bobby. God appreciates the support, but I'm sure he wouldn't want the pot roast to get cold. Now let's wrap it up. Sure thing. Thanks, J-Man. Peace. What up, James? Peace be with you, Brad. Hey, Bobby, check it out. Righteous! You should see Pastor Kay's ride. He's got the resurrection airbrushed on the back of his Jeep. Hey, brothers, gather round. Time to feel the word. Welcome, everybody. Trent, you got our verse of the day? Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Thessalonians 521. Nice job, brother. That verse was running through my spirit when I went rock climbing last weekend. To be tight with the Lord, you gotta take your faith to the limit. You know what I'm talking about? The power. That's right. Nothing runs without power. I mean, your amp is worthless unless it gets that juice. And so are we. So you gotta find a way to plug in, test all things to find the good. But how do you know what's good? It's whatever sticks to your spirit, man. Whatever God tattoos on your soul. We're all searching for that eternal ink. Oh, oh yeah. All right, let us pray. And don't forget to say a little something for Charlie, who's at home with a wicked nose ring infection. No, oh, I thought he had it that time. I don't know what to make of this youth group of Bobby's. Last night he broke curfew, but he was up reading the Bible. What do you do with that? Maybe you should punish him Old Testament style. A religious boy like Bobby would appreciate the irony. Bobby, take that off. You can't wear a t-shirt with that word on it. Such vulgarity. <laughs> Wait, which word, Hank? Satan or sucks? Well, either. Why not, Dad? Satan does suck. I know, but... He's right, Hank. What does your shirt say? Satan rules? So I was thinking, why do criminals get to have all the good food and we get nothing? Bill? You pay taxes, aren't you outraged? Yes, I am. You know what? We should have our own last meals. Hey, man, talk about it. Just going to my place, man. It'd be just like a dang old breakfast club, man. Except for going for dinner instead, you know. And like that, got no Judd Nelson either, man. There you go. The first meeting of the last meal club convenes at Boomhauer's. I love it when we do things. And then Kane was all like, "I ain't supposed to be looking out for my bro, yo." Now, I didn't know that was in Genesis, Bobby. You are so good at this. I owe it all to my extreme teen Bible. And Pastor K, he wrote a 22-minute song about the disciples. And if he can remember all the words, he's going to play it at Messiah Fest. Wow, Messiah Fest? Are you going to go? Ugh, I don't know if Dad will let me. It'll take a miracle to make him come around. But I guess that's what the Bible is all about. Can I get a what what? <laughs> Hear the word, rejoice, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. What were you doing there, brother? Sorry, I was just feeling the spirit. Nah, man, it works. That's just what I need to help spread the fire at Messiah Fest. How'd you feel about backing me up? On stage? Relax, brother, you're gonna be fine. Listen, when I get nervous before a gig, I just look at this. Dad, what do you think of this? Well, Bobby, it's, uh, so, uh, what am I looking at? It's my tattoo. No god dang way. Dad, it's okay. This is what you do now when you want to give mad respect to the Lord. The Lord has been getting mad respect since the beginning of time. He doesn't need you defacing your body. But... No son of mine is getting a tattoo. End of discussion. 
Hey, I know what this is. It's a test. Like with Job. <laughs> you rascal! You know that comedian's joke about how you always get the cart with a wobbly wheel? <laughs> it's so true. I love that comedian. Hmm. I'm still not sure. Hey, hillbillies! Why so much in cart? Food stamps expire today? No. We're cooking our last meals. Why should you have to kill somebody just to get some decent food around here? Ah, you wanna know? Hey, is that Philo though? Talking about Span and Dangle Capita, man. Hmm. The quest for the perfect meal. Of course it must start with shrimp. Dead man eating shrimp. Huh. Why didn't Jesus catch me? He has a plan for you. The Miller Flip just isn't part of it yet. Are you Pastor Kay? Yeah, brother. I'm Bobby Hill's father, and I want to talk to you about this garbage you're teaching my boy. Well, hold up. You don't want me teaching your son about God? Well, that part's fine. It's the other junk, the obscene clothing, the tattoos. Dude, you don't have to act or dress a certain way for God. You can hang with him any way, anywhere. Don't you think Jesus is right here on this half pipe? I'm sure he's a lot of places he doesn't want to be. What's more important, that Bobby's a Christian or that he has a proper haircut? I'm not giving up on either. Now stay away from my boy. Pharaoh's on our tail, Mom. Now my strength is low. Oh, I need some milk and honey. That's enough. This whole thing stops now. You're getting rid of all this stuff, and you're going to church in a suit and tie like we've always done. But Pastor K says... And you can forget about that Pastor K. I'm out of Egypt, and look at Moses dance. Peggy, this is serious. Oh, Hank, you are overreacting. These are good Christian kids having good Christian fun. You think this is fun? He looks like a burglar. What? What's that in your ear? My testimonial. Nope. Uh-uh. That's an earring. You're grounded, mister. But Messiah Fest is this afternoon. I'm Pastor Kay's backup guy. Mom! I was on board with baptizing Ladybird, but how could you destroy those perfect little ears I gave you? Hand it over. You guys just don't understand how I feel about Jesus! Messiah Fest. When I was young, you went to rock and roll concerts on Saturday night and asked for forgiveness on Sunday. Now it's all mixed together. I don't know, Hank. Something about scraping off that bumper sticker seems a little sacrilegious. Bobby loves God. You worship the devil. Dinners must be tense. This has nothing to do with religion. I've always been against vandalism, be it on my bumper or in my son's ear. I'm just setting things right. Now I'm going to finish the job in Bobby's room. <sighs> How many footprints posters does a kid need? Bobby? Ah, oh, damn, his Bible's gone. Pastor K, what do you think? Sharp. Uh, I better go now. One of the bands asked me to leave before I give them impure thoughts. <laughs> hey, Kay, dig the chain. New? Yeah. Thanks, Pop. That was your dad? Yeah, he's a roadie for the Amen. Him spreading the word across North America all summer. See you ready to rock? Let's do it. It's okay, it's okay, cause I know God will provide if the Bible is all. Might not get a lot, but we're always gonna score! Ah. Oh, it all smells so good. I bet Bonnie Prince Charles eats like this every night. I would be proud to make this sumptuous banquet to my last meal. Bon appetit. Remember, after this, the next flavor in your mouth will be the sour taste of death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no. Hmm. Well, it's, uh, I'm not gonna dig in, man. Uh, here, Bill, let oh. me serve you. But I don't want to die. God dang, man, I don't talk about no superstitions, man. Pass me that dang old salt, man. I'm gonna throw a little bit of that crap over my shoulder, man. Yeah, uh, I had a 
a big launch that uh, uh, didn't tempt fate. <laughs> oh, coming, yeah. You hear that? Min, call me. Ah! Save yourselves! Yeah, don't, don't leave me alone. I eat when I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Shrimp. Oh. I say holy, you say go! Holy! Go! Holy! Go! The Lord's my shepherd! I shall not want! He makes me lie down in green pastures! In green yards! He leaves me beside the still waters! He restores my soul! Oh yeah! Hey, man! <laughs> Dad, we're in the middle! Show. Well, I hope you enjoyed it, because it's the last time you're leaving your room until you graduate. Now, let's go. Hey, what's up? You still have another set. I'm taking my son home. I can't believe you, Dad. You're embarrassing me in front of the pastor. Mr. Hill, you just don't get it. This is how we testify. Raise him! Oh, can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. You people are all the same. You look at us and think we're freaks. Come on. Even Jesus had long hair. Only because I wasn't his dad. Is there a problem here, Kay? Yeah, Pop. This dude won't let Bobby praise JC. And he's ruining my show. Look, I just want my son back in regular church, obeying his normal parents and acting right. See, Pop? He's holding him back. What are you doing, Kevin? You forgot number five. Huh? Never come between a kid and his dad. If the man doesn't want his boy praising like you, it's cool. Yeah, but... Now, go finish your show before they start marching out of anger instead of jubilation. Fine. Sorry about that, friend. Oh, that's okay. I gotta admit, when you first walked up, I didn't think you and I were gonna be on the same page. I feel where you're coming from. Teenagers. Oh, man. Let's go, Bobby. You can give me the stink eye all you want, but it's not gonna change anything. Fine, but when I'm 18, I'm gonna do whatever I want for the Lord. Tattoos, piercings, the works. Well, I'll take that chance. Come here, something I wanna show you. Remember this? My beanbag, buddy. Oh, man, I can't believe I collected those things. They're so lame. You didn't think so five years ago. And how about your virtual pet? You used to carry this thing everywhere. Then you got tired of it, forgot to feed it, and it died. I look like such a dork. I know how you feel. <laughs> I never thought that members-only jacket would go out of style, but it did. I know you think that stuff you're doing now is cool, but in a few years, you're gonna think it's lame. And I don't want the, uh, Lord to, uh...
Do the new neighbors have any kids my age? Joseph's getting too active. I need someone to sit around and watch TV with. Stop it! No more families on the block. Look at those free weights. That's the sign of a fit single woman. She's tired of the bar scene and is looking for a man to share her foosball table and beer can collection with. Now, Bobby, if a teenager moves into that house, I'm counting on you to teach him our community values. I know there's a lot of pressure being the block captain's kid, but that was the life you were born into. Hey, country bed jamboree. My grandma sent me birthday check, but it's not in my mailbox. Which one of you take it? Why would we steal your check? How do I know? Maybe your wife needs a new pitchfork. I hope the new neighbor isn't another con. His cracks about Peggy are funny, but other than that, he's completely useless. Here comes the new neighbor. It is a lady. A big lady. It's a man. Well, I didn't know this was the type of neighborhood where guys stood outside drinking beer. And I'm totally psyched, man. I'm totally psyched. <laughs> well, you should be psyched. You can drink in the alley until 8.15 p.m. It's all in the block charter, which I left in your mailbox. Hank Hill, block captain. Nice to meet you. I'm Willie Lane. Huh. Anybody ever tell you that you've got the same name as a Dallas Cowboy backup lineman from the 1976 to 79 seasons? No. Yep. Big Willie Lane. Blocked a kick to beat the 49ers. Then was cut one year later and moved down to Mexico, where he now wrestles animals for tourist pennies. You sure about that, Chief? Whoa, that's, that's a Super Bowl ring. Sweet Lord, you're Big Willie Lane. God dang, man. You're even better than a single lady. Yay! I like this little chicken chest. He's got spirit. Yay! <laughs> Ow, my, my head. Look at him over there, Peggy. They never lose that nobility. Oh, God, he's coming this way. Just, just look casual. <clears throat> hey, hey, I thought you'd want to see this. It's the football from the kick I blocked. It looks just like it did on TV. <laughs> oh, uh, Willie, this is my wife, Peggy. <laughs> Didn't you used to be one of our cheerleaders? Me? Oh, oh, no. But I did go to a Cowboys game in 1978. Maybe you recognize me from the stands? Dad, I changed my mind again. Medium rare. Think fast, big guy. <laughs> Listen here, buddy. You have to catch it out in front with your hands, not try to cradle it into your body. It's a little something Billy Joe Dupree showed me. Billy Joe Dupree? Way to go, Bobby. Now, you listen to all the pointers this man gives you. He was taught about football and life from the great Coach Landry. Hey, hey, there's a Cowboys game on later if you want to come over. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. And you can bring the guys. They seem pretty cool. See, Peggy, I told you the guys were cool. Run, damn it, run! No, don't go out of bounds! What? Passion. Halftime. I'll grab a few brews. And hey, if we do this again, would you guys mind bringing Sam Adams instead of Alamo? No problem. I'll just dip into my son's college fund. Guys, my uniform is too tight. You'd think Willie would be offended if I took my pants off. God dang it, Bill. Don't screw this up. Hey, you guys want to see some stuff from my career? Hank, you've seen this. It's the football from that kick I blocked. Oh, and here's a picture from that kick I blocked. Hey, Willie, I have something I think you'd be interested in. Well, who's that handsome stud? That's you before the weight gain. Yeah. Hey, Willie, how'd you feel about letting me borrow your Super Bowl ring to wear to ladies' night at shenanigans tomorrow? Bill, game room now. Can't I have some more chips, or would that be stepping over the line too? Five, four, three, two... One! We did it! Cowboys win! Yeah. Yeah. Cowboys win! Yeah. Cowboys win. Yeah. 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 Cowboys win! Hey, Bob, what's up, brother? Huh. Willie specifically said, come over for the game. Boomhauer, are we overstaying our welcome if we watch the post-game show? Hmm. You know, well, toss-up, man. Oh, God, the post-game show's starting. What do we do? Well, it's our first time at Willie's. We don't want to come on too strong. <laughs> Dang, I think that's Jethro Pugh. As God is my witness, if I ever get back inside that house, I'm never going to leave. 
One good thing about other hillbillies, at least they all pass out by 9 o'clock. This guy needs to shut up or get stronger moonshine. Then call him to lower music, but be nice. Maybe when we go on vacation, we'll finally have someone to feed your stupid fish. Do you like making love to you? Rock on. Yes, hello, rock on. This can't super nuisance pawn, your neighbor. And it's getting late. Would you please lower bad company? Candy, climb on down. I'm gonna take care of this situation. Oh, man, I think I'm getting somewhere. Now, which one are you, partner? You right across the alley? Yeah, that me. He's coming to apologize. That's a start. Right on. So, your house has the phone cord running right by the side of the house. Yeah, I'm not sure why that matter, but... Ah! You like making love. Ah! The phone is dead. Where my stun gun? Oh my gosh, it's almost midnight. Did you move back the curfew in your block charter? Because that would be very sexy. Well, sorry to be a tease, but I just made a one-time exemption. Really? Then I want the fine rescinded from my game night. Well, Peggy, the appeals process... Oh my God, Khan's hassling Willie. Come on now, I had it with you oh. at your party. Oh, you're in for it now, big boy. The black captain never stand for nonsense. Hank, he caught my phone cable. Yeah, right. You're dumb. Con, please tell me you're not going to run over here and blame Willie every time a phone call gets disconnected. Right on, Double H. Right on. I am not lying. Now listen, you make my family follow your stupid rules all the time. So shut down this jock ball. It's a school night. Hey, Double H, I'll bet a cowboy fan like you would love to meet Roger Stubbock's pool cleaner. He's in there now? Well, yeah, he's a buddy of mine. Come on in and meet him. Uh, I wouldn't know what to say. He's very easy to talk to. Now get on in there. Hank, I need you. Hank. Block Captain. Ah. Oh. I cannot believe you met Roger Staubach's pool cleaner. Yep, we played foosball. He's a great guy. Just a regular guy, I tell you what. Hey, Hank Hill! I give you a block charter to Connie to take to school for a report on hypocrisy. She get an A, and teacher call you a monster. Dunga! Dunga! So what kind of haircut did the pool cleaner have, huh? Was he a redhead? I'm picturing a redhead. Willie's giving me some blocking lessons later. He says I'd make a great lineman like he was. My son is getting a clinic from a Dallas cowboy. I've always said you had a lot of untapped bulk. I'm gonna do a push-up! Which one of you sports fans wants to give old Willie a ride to work? How about you, Double H? Excuse me, guys. Official cowboy business. And that's how I block that kick. Well, that story gets better every time you tell it. Hey, thanks for the lift to work. I'm probably still legally drunk from my party. <sighs> yeah, uh, you know, Willie, I've been meaning to talk to you about that party. Uh, I know you haven't had a chance to read the block charter yet, but, uh, it did go on a little late. I hear you, Chief. But it's hard for me to go to bars. There's always one guy who wants to prove how tough he is by taking on an ex-football player. That's why I party at home. If I get in a fight, at least it's with a friend. Very responsible. Hey, Hank, you're a big cowboy fan. How'd you like to buy Dion Sanders' truck? I'll give you the friend's price. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it's a great opportunity, but I don't really need another truck. Hank, thanks for the lift. Rock on. Rock on. <laughs> Hurry, Switzer. You can do it. There you go. Uh... Willie, I know Khan's a pain in the neck, but this isn't really how we do things around here, and even Khan never walks his dog on anybody else's lawn. I hear you, brother. I just lost my head for a second. Oh, dang. I forgot my baggie. I'll run home and grab one. Come on, Switzer. Come on, girl. Hank, how much longer are you going to stare at that big pile of dog droppings? Not much longer. It's only been a couple of hours. I'm sure he just forgot. <sighs> I guess I'll just go pick it up myself. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Hank, Willie called me and asked me to give him a ride home. And to thank me, he gave me the friend's price on cowboy legend Dion Primetime Sanders Hyundai. Now help me push it into my garage. <laughs> Dad, check out what Willie taught me. Oh, yeah, who's your daddy? Oh my huh? God! Big Willie Lane. Oh. Bobby, what are you doing? That's cheating. Willie says it ain't cheating if you don't get caught. That's not true. <sighs> what the heck happened here? Your new pig-headed jock friend dug holes in my lawn. <sighs> Lawnscape assault is in clear violation of Article Nine of the Charter. <sighs> this ends today. Oh, it's this big, ugly thing over there across Mister, the Mister, you are out of control, and it's time you get in line. You know, I used to think you were a cool guy. I can be very cool when someone follows our neighborhood guidelines. Now get over there and start helping Con fill those holes. You know, Hank, you seem to have a lot of spirit. How'd you like a pep rally? Hey, we can make a bonfire. No, no stop that. <laughs> All right, that does it. <laughs> so these guys started a fire in the alley and tore some planks off my fence. You do realize that this is a felony. Sweet Betty, that's a Super Bowl ring. McMurtry, get your keister over here. I'm Willie Lane. It's nice to meet you, officers. This is the guy who blocked that kick. Uh, officers Brown and McMurtry, there's the matter of the fire hey, here. let me try that Super Bowl ring on, will you? Last time that thing was off was 500 beers ago. <laughs> <laughs> officers, uh, about the fire. Willie, you didn't start this fire, did you? He probably did it. Now he's trying to pin it on me. You guys can't possibly believe him. The Enough man... Enough out of you. Now get back inside and stop hassling Big Willie. Hey, if we kicked a few footballs, could you block them? Dad, can I have a ride to the store? Willie borrowed my bike and seems to have lost track of it. Jug, jug. Just, you know, just, for a guy who was a just, pro athlete, just, Willie's drunk a lot. Yeah, I know, Bobby. Have you thought about where we're gonna move to? I heard Tampa's nice. We're not moving anywhere. Yeah! <laughs> I got you in my yeah. sights. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna back just in case. <laughs> Con, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. No man should have to live to see this done to his lawn. So I was thinking we could work together to get rid of Willie. I talked to my father-in-law last night. He knows a guy who will do it for 5,000. Con, I'll only operate within the confines of state law and the block charter. Incoming! Hey, you sure about this? Because maybe we can get Hitman to throw in Grimble as freebie. <laughs> We mow in two minutes, Con. What do you think you're doing? Willie's sleeping off a hangover. That's exactly what I figured. Con and I are going to fire up our mowers every day at 7 a.m., the earliest time for mowing permitted in the block charter. Eventually, it'll drive that hungover bastard off the block. Over Bill's bruised and lacerated body, you will. Lay down in front of the mower, Bill. Okay. What happened to you guys? Bill, don't you remember when this was the kind of neighborhood where you could leave your door unlocked at night and no one would steal your refrigerator? I've been keeping my food in the tub. And Dale, you believed in the block charter so strongly you signed it with your real name. It's the only time I've ever done that. Gentlemen, it is a new morning on Rainy Street. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs>
Oh. Not working. Time for plan B. There's a plan B. We didn't tell you for your own protection. They wouldn't dare have their basket bottle tournament with Dion Sanders' car in the way. They were going to make me dance during halftime. We can't play bottle donkey with that car on our court. Hey, Fitzy, Tom, Tommy, Jack, Joe, Bear. Dion's car. <gasps> Hank, your lawn. I know, Bill. I know. But I think Willie just tossed his last car on his last neighbor's lawn. Why would I tip a car over on my own lawn? I don't know. It puzzles me. But Willie says he didn't do it, and we have no evidence that proves otherwise. Uh, Willie, this here's officers Collins and Winchell. <laughs> They're off duty, but came by because they wanted to meet you. Could we check out that Super Bowl ring? Oh, this little old thing? Sure. Hey, let's take a group picture. McMurtry, grab the Polaroid. Smile. Hey, I used to have a camera like that. It must have gotten lost in the move. Well, here, take this one. All units, 310 in progress oh, at 250 Arroyo Grande, please respond. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Little help! Ah. Help? I help you get the hell out of my neighborhood, you big, fat, muscle-headed load of rat jackal pig dog waste! You just called me a pig? Oh, you don't like that? Well, I don't care anymore. I don't sleep. My career is going in the toilet. My little girl can't study, and all because some fat jock slob play a little football and block a kick. I don't even know what it means to block a kick. But if you can do it, then any idiot can do it. Back off. We don't fight on this block. <clears throat> oh. Kill him, Hank. Bill's got your back. <sighs> no, Dale. If I hit him back, it's a fight. Right now, it's assault. Ain't nobody gonna believe you, Chief. Bear, you see me hit this guy? Yeah, I mean, no, he, he tried to rob you. Oh, you did so hit Hank. Just look at his poor face. A big bruise and the words Salad Sayobach. Huh? That's weird. Looks like Willie just hung himself. Con, take a picture. Hey! hey! Good thinking, Hank. Now we got evidence. Whoa! Hey! <laughs> Dale, put it in your wall safe. Ah! Squirrel tactic! Ah. Now listen here. No one else in this town has a Super Bowl ring. So that picture is proof of assault. Assault? Willie can't afford another assault charge, partner. That'd be totally uncool. Then you've got two weeks to get out of that house and off our block. I'm gonna need more time than that. The charter clearly states that when a neighbor is deposed, they get two weeks to get off the block. And that's all you're getting.
It's a solid grill, and at this price... Hey, I've been standing here for 45 minutes. Ma'am, I'm the only one on the floor today, so if you could just bear with me... Mr. I... McKenna's delivery never came. <sighs> Mr. McKenna, we're a little short-handed. Yeah, I understand you can't grill an excuse, sir, but I... Well, sir, I disagree. I don't think a monkey could do my job. Hike! Oh, Hank, I am so excited. I just joined the planning committee for the first annual Viva Los Arlentinos Day. <sighs> well, I'm glad you had a good day. Mine's been just about the worst one I can remember. We had no one on the sales floor. It is a festival celebrating Arlen's rich Hispanic heritage. And get this, Hank, there will be an actual bull run! Isn't that amazing? Ugh. It could mean a lot of substitute Spanish teaching gigs. Hank, I want you to join the committee and help out. What do you say? <sighs> Peggy, I'm exhausted. I don't have time for some harebrained bull run. Well then, I guess I won't have time to prepare your dinner tonight. Hell, why aren't you in the shower? Uh, well, you know how I am in gym class. I barely move. Why shower if I don't sweat? Oh, nice try. That'll get you an A in debate, but an F in gym. Now shower! <laughs> I always wanted to run with the bulls. Sometimes, when I'm being chased by dogs, I pretend they're bulls. Jeez, Bill, why run with the bulls? It's your weight and cholesterol count if you want to hasten death. Just jump up and down a couple of times. No, I want the bulls to do it. Guys, I'm too tired to hear a bunch of nonsense right now. Bull runs are stupid. They tried one in Mesquite last year. The bulls kept stopping to eat grass off the sidewalk. Things have changed, Hank. Mesquite was a wake-up call. Now they're pumping the bulls with testosterone, a bona fide magic elixir of power. Makes a creature bigger, Faster, meaner, and smarter. Like Vin Diesel. Exactly like Vin Diesel. Our folks are gonna get trampled and gored in a way those wussies in Mesquite could only dream of. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Dad. I'm supposed to ask you to sign this. You're flunking P.E.? Well, how's that even possible? Uh, well, I guess I'm just smaller than the other guys. I can't keep up. Son, P.E. isn't about being strong or fast or winning points. That stuff only matters in... Well, every single other area of life. But in P.E., all you have to do is try. Okay, I'll try. <sighs> the boy's got no fight in him. I don't get it. He spends five hours a day playing violent video games. What's the point if they don't have any effect on him? Maybe he's missing something. Like testosterone. Dale. It's the perfect explanation. Testosterone provides everything Bobby's missing. Energy, confidence, aggression, agility, muscle, speed. Just give him a little extra to top him off and shisha! Instant puberty. Uh, I don't know. Now, Joseph, he's bursting with testosterone. Hey, Joseph, wanna wrestle? Ah! Oh, God, it hurts! It hurts so much! Huh. Bobby doesn't need testosterone. He needs his father's acceptance. If only his glands could secrete that. Peggy, we're just taking a growing boy to a doctor. There's nothing wrong with finding out if... Hello? What? <sighs> I'll be there as soon as possible. Donna's out sick. Now I've got to do all the bookkeeping while I'm doing Joe Jack's and Enrique's jobs. Dang it, dang it. All the more reason this visit is a waste of time, Hank. We should just forget... Peggy, just drop it, okay? Well, except for being incurably ticklish, I'm 100% healthy. Bobby, good work. Now, if you'll all excuse me, it turns out what I gave in the sample cup was only half the story. So you couldn't find anything wrong with him, Doctor? Nope. He's developing at a perfectly normal rate. Uh-huh. But shouldn't we be giving him maybe just a little testosterone just to top him off, you know, jumpstart that puberty? Yes, Mr. Hill, testosterone can jumpstart puberty, but I don't give radical hormone therapy to young boys who happen to be mediocre at dodgeball. Testosterone is most commonly prescribed to men in their 40s with irritable male syndrome. Irritable what, who? Irritable male syndrome, or IMS. It's the male equivalent of PMS. There's a PMS for men? Oh, God. Look, we don't have time to talk politics. I've got to get to work. Men's testosterone levels fluctuate wildly throughout each day. In some men, it can cause lethargy, anxiety, irritability. 
You have irritable male syndrome. What? This is why you didn't want to help me with Viva Los Argentinos Day. This is why you've been grouchy and sluggish and... Dang it, Peggy, that's ridiculous. I'm just stressed about my work. Well, the stress you're feeling at work could be a result of IMS. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Just think of it like you're having your menzies. Oh. Hank, I'm going to write you a prescription for a low-dosage testosterone supplement. Go ahead and try it for... I don't need testosterone. I just need you two to get off my goddamn back. Let's go, Bobby. We're done with this jackass festival. Testosterone could have elevated Hank's mood, improved his whole outlook. Well, I should probably, uh, turn my back and file a chart or something. God dang it, I'm out of clean socks. God dang it. Breakfast is ready. Well, Bobby, I've scheduled a conference with your PE teacher so we can discuss the problem. Oh, my God, Dad, don't do that. I, I forbid it. Dang it, what is going on with you? Don't forget about your coffee, Hank. Okay, the real reason I'm failing PE is I won't take a shower with the other guys. I can't. Bobby, do not lay this trip on your father while he's trying to enjoy his coffee. He's stressed enough without you interrupting his coffee drinking time. All right, Hank. You're free to drink your coffee. Would you forget about the coffee? Bobby, no one wants to take a shower after gym. It's not fun, it's not pleasant, and usually not very sanitary. But you do it anyway. Why? Because a big part of being a man is doing things you don't want to do. But there's a way to get through it. You just lower your eyes to the floor and count the tiles. In my day, there were 60. Count the tiles. I'll do it. Well, I guess I'm off, too. Wait, Hike! Don't forget your coffee! Yeah, I'm gonna need it for the day I'm facing. And I made you some more for later. Drink it six hours from now with a meal. Do not mix it with alcohol. <laughs> hey! Hey, dude, is that a pimple or another nipple? <laughs> I'll take that F. Ta -da. <laughs> I'll take it. You said you were helping me next. Does that look like me? Ma'am, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make you happy. Here's the 22nd tour of the store. Are you getting happy? <laughs> A little. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Got dang right. So it turns out I'm not the actual Dale Gribble, but a clone of him. The original me is a super warrior from the year 2087. The second me, i.e. I, was created to help the first me fight the invading Mongol armies. Beer, please. Dale, that's asinine. And here's four reasons why. First, you're not gonna clone a super warrior out of a guy who can't even win a thumb wrestling match. But I... Two, you've spent your life swearing that the robots will exterminate the clones by the end of 2010. So which is it, robots or clones? I suppose... Three, I... you've already said you sympathize with the invading Mongolians of 2087, so you'd be the last one they'd send to fight them. And four, if you were from the future, you would have seen this coming. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> man. Hey, any of you guys feel like wrestling? Even me? Okay. Out. It just hurts so damn much. Great chicken, Peggy. Can we have some steak, too? Well, you certainly seem to have a lot of energy today. Yep. And you know, this afternoon I was pumping some iron, and I was thinking, Arlentino's day is gonna be great. And I came up with nine ways you could expedite the workload. Hank, I didn't even know you cared about In my- In fact, why don't I just go with you to the meeting tomorrow so I can tell everyone my ideas? I am upgrading your steak from Salisbury to sirloin. Thanks, Peggy. God dang it, I love you. And I love you too, son. How was P.E.? Well, uh, you know, I just went in there, in the shower, like you said, Counted the tiles and got out. That's great, Bobby. Come on, let's go do some push-ups. Huh? <laughs> you know, Peggy, 
Jag is a rerun tonight. <laughs> oh, hi. And so, our bull run will greatly resemble the legendary bull run of Paplona, Spain. Except that with ours, the men and the bulls will be separated at all times by a 15-foot-high chain-link fence. What? That's crazy. Hank, the insurance is through the roof. We do not have the funds for it. If we put on a bull run with a safety fence, our whole town will look like a bunch of goddang jackasses. And I'll be goddanged if I'm gonna let that happen. Hank, easy. Money's the problem. I'll raise it myself. Yeah. I'll run with the bulls, and I'll get every business in the Tri-County area to sponsor me. That'll cover the insurance and then some. <laughs> Honey, you are amazing. And in five days, he's already raised half the insurance money for the bull run. He is so energetic and confident and happy and in shape and... Oh, Shug, he's having an affair. Well, Nancy, I can assure you, whatever's going on with Hank is not being caused by another woman. Shug, what else rejuvenates a middle-aged man like that? An affair would explain everything. Well, except for his pimples. Oh, no, those are just a side effect. Side effect? From... Happiness. <laughs> you know, they're just little zits of joy. That iced tea ready? <gasps> <sighs> Afternoon, ladies. <laughs> oh, Hank, stop. <clears throat> Hank! I've been watching you jump that thing for three hours now. I'm exhausted. Yeah, you've trained enough. Besides, in a bull run, the only thing you have to jump over are mangled bodies. I'm not done training, you idiot. Now get on that lawnmower and pretend you're the bull. Now. Okay. Grr. Is that all you got? Come on. Hey! My God. Hank's getting right in the bull's face. I'll kick your fat bull ass. Come on. Ow! You play too rough. I'm going home. Who wants to take his place? I don't, I don't know. Thank you, man. I have a lot of calls to return. Well, fine, then. I don't want training help from a bunch of wussies anyway. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I picked up some Clearasil for your acne. Hey, where are you headed off to so fast? Well, I have to get dinner ready. Dinner can wait. I say we hit the bedroom. Hey, we can't fool around now. Your dad is on his way over for dinner. What? Dang it, he always ruins everything. Why does he have to be here? I got my own house, so I wouldn't have to deal with his crap. Can you hear yourself? Yeah, I can hear myself. Can you hear this? I never told you to secretly dope your husband. Well, you didn't say not to, did you? Medicine is no place for mixed signals, doctor. Peggy, the amount of testosterone you've given Hank is dangerous. You've effectively caused him to go through puberty again. Well, that explains the constant hair combing and why he's hanging out at the mall all the time. But don't worry, I have stopped cold turkey. Whoa, don't do that. When the body is given excessive testosterone, it stops making its own. Consequently, Hank's testicles may have shrunken by as much as 20%. Oh, my God. This is just the kind of thing that upsets him. And now, with no testosterone coming from pills or from his own glands, Hank's cognitive and physical abilities will be severely impaired. So you're saying that my husband will be soft, timid, and weak? And have defunct genitalia? <laughs> it's okay, Peggy. He just needs to ease off the testosterone gradually. Have him wear this for about a week. It's a transcrotal patch. <sighs> of course it is. He'll affix it to his scrotum, and testosterone will absorb into his system at slow, steady levels. And so it's come to this. <sighs> <sighs> I don't know what's wrong. It's like somebody sucked all the life out of me. Hank, I have to tell you something. You what? Man, come quick. Hank and Peggy having old school redneck domestic squabble on front lawn. How could you, Peggy? Oh, I bet she burned a meatloaf. It caused what? Why he point at his crotch like that? 20% shrinkage? You want me to put a patch on my what? Okay. He's going in a weird direction now. So over these last weeks, all my energy, my strength, my confidence, my happiness... Completely meaningless, Hank. I'm sorry. Oh, I think I want to yell at you, but I don't know if it's me or the 
hormones or the lack of them or... Oh. Hey, Hank! I know you're already all pumped up for the big bull run, but I thought this tape might put you even more in the mood. When bull gorings go bad. You're a brave man, Hank. Personally, I watched two minutes of it and vomited. Check out the pictures on the back. Oh. <laughs> I suppose we'll have to call your sponsors and tell them you can't run with the bulls tomorrow. I'm sure they'll understand when I explain to them that you... Oh. No, I made a promise to those people. Maybe you could wait a year. You know, until you're full strength. No, sir. Unless their checks bounced, I'm running with the bulls. But, Hank, honey, everything's changed. Now you aren't even able to... I can still do everything, just not as well. The only real difference is that now I'm scared. But if you're scared, why... Because a man does what he has to do. You were scared to take a shower in gym class, but you did it anyway. Well, running with the bulls is my shower. If you feel like you have to run tomorrow, at least wear this. There is no rule that says you can't. No, Peggy, no more testosterone. I'm not going through puberty again. I didn't like it when I was 14, and I didn't like it last week. Your hormone level is so low, this will give you just enough to be normal. Like when you were a man. <sighs> Mr. Hill, we are so grateful for your enthusiasm and your bravery. You have helped the Arlene Latin Heritage Society greatly. Well, my pleasure. Obviously, we wanted to say this to you now, in the event that you become dead sometime within the next half hour. <laughs> Come on, Bobby, it's time to go to the parade. <gasps> I demand that you put this on yourself now! Peggy, put that away! Dad! Don't run with the bulls! You don't have to prove anything to me! I lied to you! I never showered! I was too scared! You what? I'm sorry! I failed you! That's why I'm not worth dying for! Wear the pants, Hank! Don't run, Dad! Dang it! I'm running with the bulls! And I'm gonna do it without the patch. Between the drugging and the lying, one of us in this family has got to show some goddamn integrity.
Aquí nos recolectan hoy. Uh, uh, y ahora ustedes se pueden pesar. Vaya con Dios. Wedding dress, Monsignor Martinez likes hat. Oh, that is one sexy priest. Este sábado, Eduardo Felipe su mismo va a aparecer en persona en Arlen, Texas. Oh my God. The actor who plays Monsignor Martinez, Eduardo Felipe, is coming to Arlen. We have to go, Shugs. I bet he's even swarthier in person. I have been using videotapes of the show as a teaching tool in my Spanish class. I bet I could get the actor to show up and be a guest speaker. I would love to see the full-time teacher, Mrs. Pratt, try to follow me after that. I am uh, very excited to be in Arlen to promote the new episodes of my show. This will be our 11th season. I can't believe it's really him. Hey, could you say Vaya con Dios for me? Uh, next. Hola, my name is Peggy Hill, and I am the three-time winner of the Substitute Teacher Award at Tom Landry Middle School. Well, maybe I should be asking for your autograph. Oh, no. Senor Felipe, my students and I love your show, and I was wondering if you could come to my Spanish class as a special guest. Oh, I'm sorry, Senora, but I have a rule about special appearances. I do them only for my charity work with the sick children or for paid vacations on the cruise ships. Dad, I accidentally used your toothbrush again. Throw it out. I got freaking Monsignor Martinez, and he is coming to my classroom tomorrow. Really? Wow. Mom, can I come meet him? You bet you can, but you have to pretend to be a sick child. Hmm. What? The man only does guest appearances for sick children, so what? Peggy, the boy ain't right, but he's not sick. Can I be in a bubble? Who is excited about watching this week's episode of Monsignor Martinez? Yeah! <gasps> Pare, senora. If you put that tape in, it will explode. The real Monsignor Martinez! Oh, oh, senor, this is the sick boy I was telling you about. He cannot talk. Be brave, little soldier. From now on, you will be in the prayers of Monsignor Martinez. Senor, he should not be out of his bubble for too long. If the moment is truthful, then stabbing to death El Jefe with an icicle will come almost without conscious effort. Okay, kids. I'm afraid that is all the time we have with our very special guest. Oh, oh, in Espanol. Ay. 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 That was Don't the best, the coolest. Oh, gracias, gracias, Senor Felipe. The children loved you. Oh, the pleasure was all mine. Sometimes I forget we have many young viewers. Uh, we should probably do more episodes like the one about the monkey who smuggled the cocaine under his little hat. Senora, I'm about to have some lunch. Please, join me. I noticed you have the same passion for teaching that I have for acting. <laughs> Gracias. Hey, say bye con Dios, dude. Hey, hey. Uh, do not look over. It will only encourage them. Bye con Dios, you pant load. Uh, Senora Hill, I have two children who are about to take entrance exams to private high school in America. A teacher like yourself with your passion could help them pass such a test. Would you be interested in coming to Mexico to tutor my children? Really? I can see I have surprised you with my offer. I will give you a day to think about it. Talk it over with the loved ones. Oh, senor, I, I have something to confess. That boy in my classroom was not sick at all. Actually, that boy is my healthy son, Bobby. Senora Hill, I am an actor. I could tell right away that he was not sick. I do not mean to be unkind, but your son gave a terrible performance. Yes, he was terrible, wasn't he? Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> but not as terrible as this fish. Waiter! Ike, are you going to the propane convention in Alberta? There's a propane convention in Alberta? It's exciting, isn't it? Oh, but you'll be so far away, in Canada. Well, yeah, but no distance is too great when it comes to propane. Mm-hmm, and I would have no problem with you going to that convention, even if it's for two weeks. Well, I don't see why you would. Hank, 
there is no propine convention in Alberta. What? But I have been offered a job in Mexico. The actor who plays Monsignor Martinez wants me to go to Mexico and be a private tutor for his children. It'll only be for two weeks. No way, Peggy. You only know this guy through the television. Oh, Hank, can't you see what an incredible opportunity this is for me? <sighs> this is a real double whammy for me, Peggy. You want to leave and there's no propane convention. But if it means that much to you, I guess you should give this guy a call and tell him yes. Thank you, Hank. Oh. Luann, I want you to look after Bobby and Hank while I'm gone. I would have had you practice with an egg first, but there's no time. You're trusting me? I will do such a good job being you that you will not even know that you're gone. Well, I, I guess I should get going. Wow, this is going to be the first time we'll be apart for more than a couple of days. Yeah, uh, Peggy, remember to take your glasses off before you take a nap on the plane. I will, Hank. Pe Peggy, not in the airport. Your flight was good? You know, I've never flown first class before. My husband says, coach is just as good. You get there at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. People who have never flown first class always say that. Uh, Senora Hill. Niece are my children, your students. Antonio and Cristina. Hola, Hola Senora, Senora Hill. Hill. Hola. Senora, you have had a long flight. May I suggest you start fresh mañana? Oh, mañana. Yes, of course. Let me show you around. Mi casa es tu casa. Senora Hill, acting is not my only passion. I have another, making homemade wine. I too have another passion, Boggle. It is good to have many passions, yes? I have always said. Uh, these blackouts happen all the time in Mexico. One of my children was conceived in such a blackout. Oh. Would you like to taste my homemade wine, Senora Hill? Well, you have the most spectacular sunsets in Mexico. Yes, it is the pollution. My wife and I used to sit out here every night and watch the sun sink behind the city. If it's not too personal a question, where is your wife? She is, uh, how you say, with our ancestors. Oh, I am so sorry. I miss her very much. <sighs> the heart can get lonely. More wine? More wine. Well, who could say no to a glass of homemade Mexican wine? <laughs> this is actually pretty good, Luann. I got the recipe from Red Book, which is actually a magazine. Well, I'm done. See ya. See ya. <gasps> oh, wait. I think you're supposed to excuse yourself from the table properly. Sit down, please. May I be excused from the table? <laughs> yes, you may. He's a lovely boy. Who, Bobby? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. We do not answer the phone during dinner hour. <sighs> yes, we do. Hello. Hi, honey, it's me. Oh, how's the new job going? Oh, it's great. Senor Felipe took me on a tour of his mansion. He showed me his private gym and wine cellar, and I tasted some of his homemade wine. Huh, that sounds unnecessary. Oh, he was just being courtly. He's Latin. That's what they do. They are courtly. <sighs> oh, Hank. You know, I should get some sleep. I start teaching tomorrow. Love you. Uh, back at you. Hmm. My children have promised me that they will listen to your every word as if you were their mother. For you, Senora Gil. Oh, a mango. One of the passion fruits. Gracias, Senor. <laughs> uh, it's from the children. Oh, right, uh huh. The children. Gribble residence. Nancy, it's Peggy. Eduardo is flirting with me big time. I think he is coming on to me. Are you sure? Uh-huh. He used the familiar tu casa instead of su casa. We drank wine on a balcony and watched the sunset. Where's the wife? Dead. Perfect. Did you flirt back? I do not know. Did you blush and giggle a lot when he talked? Oh, I might have blushed and giggled once or twice. <gasps> Congratulations, Shaggy. We're flirting. <gasps> but I gotta warn you. 
Don't enjoy it too much, because there's this moment where there is no turning back. All of a sudden, you can't remember your husband's name. Your body goes limp, and then you are pulled down by the undertow of passion. You're drowning, Shug, but you don't care. I will never drown, because I am wearing the best life preserver there is. My marriage to Hank. Margarita. I want you, Margarita. I want you like I've wanted no other woman. And I am afraid you cannot have me, Eduardo, for I have given my heart to another, Hank Hill. Oh, I hate this Hank Hill for stealing your heart. Please, I must have you now, or I will throw myself off this cliff. I must refuse your advances for the second time. Eduardo, no! Think of the children! What is the capital of Oregon? Senora Hill, what is the capital of Oregon? Huh? Uh, Portland. No, no, Salem. Are you sure, Senora? Who's the American here? Hey, Luann, did you buy any beer? I know you wanted me to get a case of beer, but it's not very healthy. So I got a case of V8 juice instead. But it's my week to bring the beer out to the alley. Uncle Hank, V8 juice has eight vitamins. Beer has one. Barley. Ugh. So Peggy phoned Nancy last night, and apparently this Eduardo fella's real sweet on Peggy. What? Dale, I think Nancy must have had a bad connection or something, because I talked to Peggy, and she said that Eduardo was just being courtly. Mm, no. Doesn't surprise me. Peggy's a very beautiful woman. Shut up, Bill. Why? Don't you think Peggy is beautiful, Hank? Oh, of course I do. I just don't feel the need to say it is all. <laughs> And that is why it is called Pittsburgh. Ah, senora. Senora, I need your help uh, in running some lines. Okay. You are the ambassador's beautiful daughter who speaks no Spanish. We hide in the drug lord's greenhouse. It is hot. Very, very hot and also very dangerous. You must stand close. Oh, well... It is how people would stand in a hot, dangerous greenhouse. The one thing more dangerous than my enemies is your beauty. Hold me tight. I so greatly fear these enemies who threaten us. Hush, Rebecca. I believe my enemies are coming. And I also believe that I am falling in love with you. <gasps> oh, God, that is good dialogue. I need an agua de frutas break. <laughs> Uncle Hank, we need to have a serious talk about Bobby. No, we don't. Now, Bobby's at an age where we should be giving him his sex talk. Luann, stop trying to be your Aunt Peggy. You're no Peggy. You're fired. Well, I'm glad you're firing me. Because being Aunt Peggy is the most thankless job I've ever had. No wonder she ran away to Mexico. <laughs> hey. Oh, I'm sorry I frightened you, Senor Philippe. You did not frighten me. We need to talk. Uh, excuse me, Margarita, but those must be the roses I had delivered. Roses? Yeah, I know this is not what I brought you up here for, but would you mind getting the roses and bringing them to my bedroom? See? Si. Uh, could you place the roses on the bed? Maybe... Maybe spread the petals around. It needs a, a woman's touch, yes? Look, senor, we really need to talk. Uh, yes, I remember, but I need a moment to uh, prepare myself, and then I will give you my full attentions. <gasps> he wants to kiss me much! Okay, soon you are going to be face to face with a naked, wet, Latin television star. All right? Then what, Peggy, huh? You'll forget. What's his name? Oh, God. What is his name? Hike! Hike, y'all. No, no, no. I will not give that man the thrill of me seeing him naked. No. Hey, Senora Hill, what in God's name are you doing? Stop playing coy with me, Eduardo. I must insist that you leave, Senora. All right, I am not leaving until you wrap this towel around you and you listen to what I have to say. Senor Philippe, 
I understand that my being an American woman may seem exotic. Ah, my wife has come home early. What? Your wife? <gasps> what do we do? What do we do? I will go down to greet her. Yes, yes, that's good. Go, 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 go. <gasps> the roses. <gasps> 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 Senora Hill, where are the roses? Don't worry, I took care of them. Now, where is your wife? Uh, Senora Hill, this is my wife, Maria. Hola. I, I thought you were dead. No, I was with my ancestors. No, not my ancestors. My, uh, ay, como se dice? My grandparents. Yes, yes, I told her this. Senora Philippi, I just want you to know that nothing happened between us. Even though I was flattered by your husband's advances, I am a happily married woman. I am so sorry, but I will not be able to satisfy your lust for me. Uh, wait, wait, I, I, I am sorry. I, I am not sure I understand. Uh, you, <laughs> you thought I wanted you as a lover? <laughs> well, yes. Well, you couldn't have been more obvious. The mango, the roses. Uh, the roses were a surprise for my wife. Well, of course you would say that in front of her. But you cannot deny your constant flirting with me. I mean, the wine, the familiar use of two instead of Sue. I was just being a good host. Uh, senora, I am sorry, but I do not desire you in that way at all. You are, how you say, um, old. Old? I am not old. I am only 41. <sighs> oh, no, I've, I've done it again. Anyway, I would never, never, never take you as a lover. I got it. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Ah, uh, yes, it's quite comical. <laughs> Look, my wife finds it comical as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, hello, Strickland Propane. Hi, Hank. It's me. I just thought you would like to know that I'm coming home tomorrow. Turns out my students were really fast learners. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad you're coming back. It's not the same without you. Uh, miss you. My flight number is Mexicana Airlines 710. Okay, bye. <laughs> I have contacted another teacher for your children. Her name is Sandra Morgan. She's 61 years old. She is old. Well then, vaya con Dios. Uh, I meant that as myself, not as you know, but a character. No. Welcome home to Texas, Peggy. Where is the truck? Oh, no. What's this on the floor? Hank, I, I have been on a plane all night. Whatever is on the floor, I will pick it up in the morning. Well, hey, looks like chocolates. And, uh, wow, they're, uh, kisses. Did you do this? Yeah, I got it from the Red Book. Hey, I wonder where they go. Do they lead to our bed? Maybe. They don't lead to the bed. Nope, keep going. To the bathroom? Oh, okay, the tub. Hank, did you buy scented candles? I am tired and I give up. What am I looking for? His and her sinks. Well, that's yours right there. Turn on the tap, give it a try.
Hey, guys, how do I look on this one, huh? We're not here to joyride the toilets, Dale. If you can't get enough fun out of helping me buy new handle bushings, there is something seriously wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Hank Hill. What were you doing in plumbing aisle? Need new crescent moon stencil for outhouse? <laughs> I'm doing home improvements, Con. Ah, trying to improve your home like putting lingerie on a monkey. Better to save up all your dog-fighting money and buy ticket to Arlen Parade of Homes. I'll have you know that my house is part of Texas history. Yep, it was built by the great-grandson of Captain T. Anderson Kearney, who fired the first shot at the Battle of Gonzales. Hey, maybe I should enter my house in the Parade of Homes. Hey, who forgot to change the toilet paper? You know, this closet would look a lot bigger if you took out my shoes and replaced them with Nancy's. Well, we don't need any Hollywood special effects for people to see what a great house we've got. Hey, maybe we can put T. Anderson Kearney's brass boot remover by the door. Kind of an exclamation point for when people leave the room. Talking about old house beautiful, man. Don't, 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 don't swim up no bed pool, man. You're talking about like, just like a dang old stilt, man. They don't see no, no double teams in his day, man. Well, thanks, Boomhauer. I just hope the people on the parade of homes say the same thing. <coughs> Welcome to the Bobby Hill room. No flash photography on the trolls, please. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Bobby, you know what might spruce this room up? A nice display case for your troll action figures with solid wood doors, you know, so people won't be tempted to steal them. Okay. Um, aren't they called troll dolls? <sighs> yes. Now, watch closely, Bobby. This house is gonna be yours someday, and you're gonna need to know how to take care of it. Can you hammer in a nail with a single blow? This isn't a circus, Bobby. But I could. Dad, help me. Help me, I'm drowning! Huh? Oh, Bobby, you'd had such a good few years. It wasn't me, the wall's leaking. Oh. Good Lord, it looks like it's coming right out of the stud. It's okay. It's okay, babies. Daddy's here. Now, let's get you out of these wet clothes. Oh, what kind of a sick bastard runs a water pipe through a stud without installing a nail guard? I don't know! Well, the water damage looks pretty minor. Yeah, at Lone Star Home and Casualty, we see some doozies. The Matthew McConaughey water weenie claim comes to mind. Yeah, well, about my wall... Don't worry, Mr. Hill. We'll hire someone to come in here and get this wall fixed up before that Parade of Homes tour. Uh, I don't really like strangers touching my walls. Maybe you could just pay me and I'll get the supplies and fix it myself. Sorry, but company regulations require we use licensed and bonded contractors. But I can absolutely assure you they do a first-rate job. Uh, okay. Now, would you like to be tested for mold while we're at it? We usually do one after any type of water damage. Won't cost you anything. I guess. Sure, go ahead. Uh, excuse me. Do I need to file a claim for my loss? Yeah. Uh, you're gonna have to give those to the insurance company so they can assess them properly. I'm sure you know what to do with them. Don't leave any excess joint compound on the threads, and always wipe the pipes down when you're done as a courtesy to the next plumber. Now, let's see if that outlet needs rewiring. Oh, I'll do it. Just, uh, hand me that voltmeter. Hi, I'm Steve Goodman. I'm here to check the room for mold. Huh, so that's what you use to test for it. Boy, I've never seen one of those before. You think I could give it a try, Steve? Nope. I'm done here. Okay, who wants to turn off the circuit breaker? Too late, I call it. Now remember, Hank, the Parade of Homes is not a competition. But this is what we're up against. It's pretty nice for new construction. Can I help you? Oh, uh, yeah, we're in the Parade of Homes next week, too. Hank Hill, single-story ranch style. We were just admiring your place. Nice shutters. Well, thanks. That means a lot coming from another parader. I'm still trying to get the place looking presentable. It's funny. I spent my whole life dreaming about owning my own house. Now all I dream about is the next thing that needs to be painted or polished or replaced. 
I love those dreams. I hate to toot my own horn, but this wall looks pretty good. Let's enjoy it now before Bobby puts up that poster of babies dressed as strawberries. Hike, it's our first looky-loo. Okay, be cool. I'm cool. Welcome. Knocks pretty nice, doesn't she? That's solid oak hardwood. No pressed filler there. Now notice the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. You might want to save that for someone who's not on the clock. I'm Rob Hoagland, TechnoPure. Your insurance company sent me. Oh, uh, Hank Hill, what can I do for you? You can put your hand down and step two feet away from me. You may be contaminated. What? Your house has tested positive for mold. Ah! Yeah, uh, you might not want to take such deep breaths. I've got mold? Well, that can't... I mean, how does... God, is it hot in here? I'm really hot. Uh, Mrs. Hill, maybe you could get him a chair. I'm gonna make a small exploratory incision so I can have a little look-see here. There she blows, my great green whale, Aspergillus. You're lucky you caught this leak early before this mold really spread. I've got green stuff inside my walls, and I'm lucky? Relax, Mr. Hill. Rob Holguin is gonna do everything it takes to get rid of this mold, and your insurance is gonna pick up the tab. Everything from frictional irrigation with a concentrated chlorine solution to forced atmospheric dehydration. So wait, you're saying you're gonna rub it with bleach and then blow it dry? <laughs> well, in layman's terms, yes. Well, I've got some bleach and a fan. I could probably do it myself. <laughs> Every joker with a bottle of Clorox and a tornado thinks he's an expert. Look, unless the job is done by a certified mold expert, such as myself, your insurance company will drop you like, well, I drop this, but then there'd be mold on your floor. Hank, let him do it. He's a professional. Uh, can you guys get it done in two days? This house is on the parade of homes. This is the kind of thing they take a picture of and put it on their blooper reel. Yeah, lucky for you, Aspergillus is my specialty. I should have it calling me daddy in no time. So are we okay to stay here like this? Okay? Well, that's a medical question, Mrs. Hill. I'm not a medical doctor. Now I'll need you both to sign this waiver, which certifies I've informed you that's a medical question and I'm not a medical doctor. Hank, listen to this. Mold has been known to cause itchiness, asthma, chronic fatigue, and disorientation. Bobby, quick, what's your middle name, huh? When's my birthday? Here, follow my finger. Your birthday is... I don't know. Hank, the mold's got him. Help me, Dad! <sighs> Will you two just calm down? Now, it's just a little patch of mold. We'll let Holgan do his job, and everything will be fine. And the boy never knew your birthday, Peggy. He always just piggybacked on my card. <sighs> yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Dale, take that dang thing off. We're perfectly safe here in the alley. Heck, we'd all be perfectly safe if we slept in Bobby's room. Sleep over? I'll get my jammies. Don't let him in, Hank. With his foot fungus, he'd just be tracking more mold into the house. That area between his toes is as rich and fertile as the Nile River Delta. Can we still have the sleepover? I'll hang my feet out the window. Attention! Mold patient zero! I knew your house not good enough for Parade of Home. Maybe next month. Parade of Toxic Waste Dumps. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> How could we still have mold? I thought you said you got rid of it. I did, from the leak. But there must be a secondary infestation. The latest sample from this room showed an airborne mold level of 500 parts per cubic meter. Aha! Uh -huh. Hmm, nothing. What are you doing? I can't get rid of this other mold until I find it, Mr. Hill. Uh, insurance regulations require that we reduce the level of mold in here to that oh. found in the air outdoors. 400 parts per cubic meter. 400? Bobby, quick, get inside! No, no, I mean stay outside! Get, get, get in the car and turn on the air conditioner now! Mrs. Hill, Mrs. Hill, it's okay. 400 parts per cubic meter is like a fly speck in a big gulp cup. Wait, wait, it sounds like there's almost no difference between the air in here and the air outside. What's the problem? Uh, I could try and explain it to you, but if you want this place ready in time for that parade of homes, it would probably make more sense for me to just do my job. Thank God. I thought this thing was broken. There's the culprit. Alterneria. Eh, you're not so tough now without your buddy Stacky Botris, are you? Are you sure that's even mold? 
It could just be an old dust bunny. I wish it were a dust bunny. In fact, I wish this whole damn wall were full of real bunnies. But this looks like mold that's been here for 20 years. What's on the other side of this wall? <gasps> Our bedroom! Remember that night I thought I heard something? And you said it was nothing? Well, thank you. You just signed my death warrant. If we've been sleeping in this room with mold for 20 years, how come we've never had itching or asthma or any of those other problems we read about? Well, that's probably because the government hasn't found a scientific link between mold and any known health problems. Yet. Then why do you keep banging holes in my walls? Because I'm the hunter, and mold is my antelope. And if I don't bang holes in your wall, my conscience bangs holes in my head. Holguin here. I need backup. I got a buy room situation at Rainy Street. Hey, scrape that out more carefully, will you? It's a wall, not a pumpkin. Whoa, 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 you're gonna have to stay out of the hot zone. That's both bedrooms and the master bath. But where are we gonna... Automatic ice maker. Oh, boy. What? What, oh, boy? Seal off the kitchen. Now, hold on. This is good. Doghouse is hot. Aspergillus. All right, that does it. Everybody out now. Hey, hold on. I said stop. Mr. Hill, I understand you're upset, but you really don't want us out of your house. Yes, I do. Okay. But if I get on this walkie-talkie and call in a code Charlie, my guys will be out of here in 36 seconds flat. That's how long it'll take for your house to become worthless. What? Look, you've been informed there's mold in this house, which means if you ever want to sell this property... I don't want to sell. I plan on passing this house down to my son. Ooh, goody gumdrops. Thanks, Dad. A worthless mold house. Do you have any pet birds, Mr. Hill? No. Good. Can three family members share a living room without driving each other crazy? <sighs> Bobby, I've asked you several times to stop making that joke. Now go to your room. 18, 19, 20. Mr. Hill, you've got to get out. Uh, you get out. Your whole house is contaminated. The Negar environment's been compromised. The what? There's no time to explain how it wasn't my fault. Now move. That towel could be filthy with mold. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Forget the toys. The insurance company will pay for everything. Now move. <laughs> Leave it to you to make a hospital gown look unsexy, Hank. It says 123 Rainy Street. This is on the parade of homes? That can't be right. Hank? Oh, God, no, the parade of homes. Is today the fifth? Uh, this ranch-style rambler with upgrades to the doors and windows and roof uh, was built by the great-grandson of a uh, he... Uh... Smile, Hank. I want to get a picture of you next to the mold. What do you know? Aaron Brockovich has got mold. And Ed McMahon. Oh, he killed his dog, Muffin. Maybe we'll meet them at a survivor group. If Lone Star Home and Casualty is so interested in looking for mold, you should start with this room. It was growing on the soap. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about the mold in your hotel, Mr. Hill. They don't have a policy with Lone Star, so there's no potential liability on our end. They're arguing again, Hank. Or making love. Is that what you wanted? Making love. Uh, hey, yeah. You got a busted latch there, neighbors. Yeah. Anyway, my lady and I were wondering if you'd care to join us for a Lynchburg lemonade. Uh, thank you, but, uh, we were just about to sit down to dinner. Ah, well, cool, cool. No baggie, okay. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, I'm finding a few happy now. Okay. Who's ready for Peggy Hill's coffee maker ramen, huh? <sighs> I think music that loud would kill the bugs, but it doesn't. I tried sleeping in the empty swimming pool, but, you know, 
the dogs. Can I just go home? I promise I'll put on one of those spacesuits. Dang it, Bobby. If T. Anderson Kearney could fight to give Texans a home, then I can fight to get yours back. Rob Holgan is gonna need to use this boot remover on his ass when I'm done with him. Hello, I'd like to speak to Mr. Holgan. Sorry, he's at lunch. Can I take a message? You don't have enough room on that while you were out slip for what I have to say. <laughs> All right, Holgan, I'm through with your... Hey, hey, you're that mold tester guy, Mr. Goodman. What? What are you two doing together? Hey, guys, they just put all the stuff out for Make Your Own Sundays. My insurance adjuster? This is ridiculous. You're all in on this scam together, aren't you? All you guys care about is money. Okay, fine. How much to get rid of you? Is that a Cirrus machine? <laughs> yeah, but it'll only let you take out $300 a day. That's just not gonna cut it. Nope, not when you got a deal as sweet as ours. Heck, I could throw a dart at the phone book, and I bet you the house I hit would test positive for mold. <laughs> and the phone book, too. Say that other thing you say, Rob. You know, the, the yee-haw. Oh, yeah. Yee-haw! There's gold in them there walls. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for no pest strips for both crawling and flying pests. The motel I'm staying at is a little dreary, so if you have the ones that look, you know, a little festive, that'd be good. Oh, well, hell yeah. Dude, we got ones with snowflakes. We got ones with burrows on them. I mean, they're all pretty beautiful. Huh. I'm coming. Good morning, Mr. Holgan. I was wondering if we could have a word. Sure, come on in. I'd love to show you my new flat screen TV. Just got it. So, Mr. Holgan, I thought I'd come over here and ask you one more time politely to please leave my house alone. Sorry, Mr. Hill, but I just ordered a new couch. That big TV just makes this one look so dinky. Well, at least I tried. Hey, Bill, why don't you make yourself comfortable? Thank you, Hank. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, I just got myself certified as a trained mold expert. Took me 30 minutes. Great. Maybe I'll see you at our conference in Aspen. But you know, the insurance company will never let you test your own house and pass it. Now, that would be a clear conflict of interest. I know. That's why I'm going to test your house. Bill, you ready? Yep, ready. Ew. Yeah, pretty gross, huh? With the fungus and all. Hey, is fungus a mold? Let's find out. Whoa there. Now, now, now take it easy, okay? Let, let, let's just talk about this. Hey, you're testing right near his feet. Sorry, I'm new at this. But after I send the results to your insurance company, I'm sure they'll send someone out here and they'll do a more thorough search, punch a few holes in your wall, rip up your floorboards. You know, I heard nine out of 10 houses have mold, but who knows, maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones. Okay, okay, what do you want? Okay, Mr. Hill, you passed. Your house is officially mold free, goodbye. Now hold on, we're not quite done yet. You two owe me a parade. So if you'll just step this way, and I know you will. Come on, Bobby, let's show them the house that's gonna be yours someday. <clears throat> this ranch-style rambler was built by the great-grandson of T. Anderson Kearney. Uh, you might want